Welcome to the January 19th meeting of the uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Commission. Uh, at this point, could we have the opening announcements, please? Before we begin the agenda, the Wichita Sedgwick County Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and the Wichita Sedgwick County Board of Zoning Appeals would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this public hearing. For those in attendance, copies of the agenda for today's meeting, the public hearing procedure, and planning department staff reports on all agenda items are available in the lobby. The Planning Commission's and the BZA's bylaws limit the applicant on a zoning, subdivision, or variance application and his or her representatives to a total of 10 minutes of speaking time at the start of the hearing on that item, plus up to two minutes at the conclusion of that hearing. All other persons wishing to speak on agenda items are limited to three minutes per person. However, if they feel that it is needed and justified, the chairman may extend these times by up to two minutes. All speakers are requested to state his or her name and address for the record when beginning to speak. When you are finished speaking, please share your name, address, and the case number on the sheet provided in the room. This will enable staff to notify you if there are any additional proceedings concerning that item. All speakers at the podium, please remove your face mask before speaking into the microphone. Please note that all written and visual materials you present to the Commission and the Board will be retained by the Secretary as part of the official record. If you are not speaking, but you wish to be notified about future proceedings on a particular case, please provide your contact information to the Planning Department. The Planning Commission and the Board are interested in hearing the views of all persons who wish to express themselves on all the agenda items. However, we ask that all speakers please be as courteous and concise as possible and avoid long repetitions of facts or opinions which have already been stated. For your information, the Wichita City Council has adopted a policy for all city zoning items. A copy of this policy is available from the planning staff. The City Council relies on a written record of the Planning Commission hearings and does not conduct its own additional public hearings on these items. The decision of the BZA is final. Any appeal of a decision of the BZA is to the District Court. Let's uh, have a roll call uh, now. Fox is absent. Miles? Present. Hartman? Here. Green? Here. Uh, Foster? Here. Williams Bay? Here. McKay? Here. Joe Johnson? Don't believe he's with us. Okay. Uh, Blick? I just got a text from him. He's going to be here. He's just running a little late. Okay. Bill Johnson? Here. Susie Cunningham? Here. Abdul? Here. Nix? Not here. And Warren? Present. Okay, um, now I'd like to call for approval of the prior minutes. We have uh, two sets of minutes. The first one was from December 15, and I show that uh, McKay and Miles had left early on that meeting, uh, and on uh, then we have a second one on January 5th. Uh, I would call for a a uh, motion to approve the uh, minutes of the meeting on uh, December 15th. So moved. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. Motion And I'm carried. abstaining. Yes. Okay. Well, I 
You're right. It has been deferred. Thank you. Okay, now we will uh, take consideration of uh, the subdivision uh, committee recommendations and see if uh, we can approve any of them by consent. Uh, the first uh, case is sub 2021-00041, final plat of uh, MAC Meridian Edition. Does anyone want to hear this case? Does anyone virtually want to hear this case? We'll take that one on consent. The next subdivision case is sub 2022-00072, one step final plat in Lionsgate edition. Uh, does anyone want to hear that case? Okay. Virtually, is there anyone that wants to hear that case? We'll take that one on consent. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for counsel. Yeah. Do, do we need to ask if there's anybody in the, in the chambers here that wants to hear this case? It's probably better to say, is there any commissioner that wants to hear the case first? And then, is, and then the commissioner's public or remote, and then anybody, members of the public. The way you said it's okay, but it's not normally how we've done okay. that. So is there anyone uh, in the audience here or virtually that would like to hear either one of these cases? Okay, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve items 2.1 and 2.2. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. the same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, there are no public hearing vacation items uh, today, so we'll move into the public hearings and find out uh, if anyone uh, wants to hear these cases. First one is uh, uh, CON 2022-00048. It's a conditional use request in the city to allow 155 foot monopole telecommunications facility with a four foot lightning rod. Generally located on the north uh, side of West Pawnee and south of Southwest Boulevard. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? I, I've got a question for either staff or the uh, applicant. Okay, uh, then we'll hear that case. Or do you want to you want to ask the question at this point? I just I just want to ask the question okay. if, if, if possible. I don't, we will don't hear, need to hear the whole case. Just we will hear four point one. Uh, <clears throat> the next case Mr. is Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Scott Wadle, just a quick question. Do we want to check and see if any members of the public would like to hear that case? And if they do, then we could hear the full case. If not, then you would have the discretion on whether you want to just ask the staff question. Okay, good point. Is there anyone present uh, from the public that would like to hear the uh, case 4.1? Is there anyone virtually that would like to hear this case? Okay, if not, we can answer the question now, correct? The question centers around the height of this pole and the proximity of the railroad track to the east. Um, it appears as though that railroad track would be within that 155 foot uh, height of the monopole if it were to fall in the direction of the railroad track is that going to be an issue and either staff or the uh, applicant could probably answer that question am 
My name is Patrick Irwin. I am the applicant for this proposal in front of you. Uh, to answer your question, um, it is within the 150 feet. However, the regulations set forth are half the height of the tower in an industrial area. And so it would be 75 feet and it would be outside that. However, I understand your concern of possibility of a tower failure falling that direction. I can tell you that the way these structures are designed, that any kind of failure would be at the top and it would collapse uh, upon itself within the 75 foot area. Thank you, that's what I needed to know. You're welcome. Okay, then we'll take that one on consent. 4.1. The next case, 4.2. is CON 2022-00049, conditional use request in the county for a 195-foot uh, monopole wireless communication facility uh, on property zoned uh, RR Rural Residential located on the south side of 71st Street South within a quarter of a mile of South 199th Street East. Is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear that case? I don't need to hear the case. I just have a question for staff and or the applicant, so. Okay. Is there anyone from the public present that would like to uh, hear this case? Yes. Okay, we will hear that case. 4.3 is CON 2022-00050, uh, con conditional use uh, request in the county for 150-foot uh, monopole wireless communication on property zoned SF20, single-family residential, located on the north side of West 21st Street North within a half a mile west of North 135th Street. Is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear that case? Do we have anyone uh, present from the public that would like to hear that case? Yes. Okay. We will hear that case. Next is uh, Con 2022-00052, it's a conditional use request in the city to allow for a group residence limited on property zoned SF5, <clears throat> single family residential district generally located on the southwest corner of uh, South Morningside Drive and South Woodlawn. Uh, is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear that case? Is there anyone uh, present from the public that would like to hear that case? Yes, yes. Okay, we will hear that case. Um, next we have CON 2022-00053, conditional use in the city to permit uh, entertainment as an accessory use to a restaurant uh, defined as a nightclub in the city, generally located on the south uh, side of West 13th Street North within uh, one block east of Northwest Street. Is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear that case? Is there anyone from the public that would like to hear that case? Is there anyone from the public uh, virtually uh, that would like to hear that case? If not, we'll take that on consent. Next is uh, CUP 2022-00059, amendment uh, in the city to DP 229 to allow for an outdoor equipment and vehicle sales generally located on the southeast corner of East Central and North Greenwich Road. Uh, is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear that case? 
Is there anyone present uh, from the public that would like to hear that case? Is there anyone listening virtually that would like to hear that case? If not, we'll take... Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. This is recommend denial. Okay. No. Sorry. Uh, the next case is uh, PUD 2022-00025. It's a zone change request in the city from TF3 to two-family residential, uh, excuse me, two-family residential to uh, PUD planned unit, unit development to unify commonly owned parcels and create a uh, common amenity space uh, on the property generally located between North Waco and North Back Bay Boulevard. Is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear that case? Is there anyone present that would like to hear that case? Is there anyone listening in virtually that would like to hear this case? not we'll take uh, 4.7 on consent next we have PUD 2022 uh, planned unit development request in the city to split lots to provide separate lots for each structure generally located within a half mile east of South Meridian and one quarter mile south of West Harry is there anyone that would like to hear that case on the commission. Is there anyone present uh, from the public that would like to hear this case? Is there anyone listening in virtually that would like to hear this case? If not, we'll take that on consent. Next case, uh, is uh, ZON 2022-00054 with uh, CON 2022-00039. This was referred back uh, from uh, the Board of County Commissioners. The zone change request in the county from rural residential to uh, SF 20 single family residential for site development with the uh, aforementioned uh, CON 2022-0039 to permit community swimming pool and accessory apartments generally located on the northeast corner of the intersection of 167th Street uh, West and West Central. Is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear that case? Do we have to hear this case since there is a denial and an approval? The uh, Kirk Sponsel, Assistant County Counselor. Um, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, so this was referred back to, uh, to the commission from the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, statute governs what we do here. So it says um, that it may be referred back to the Planning Commission. Um, uh, it, and I quote, if the Governing Commission returns the Planning Commission's recommendation, the Planning Commission, after considering the same, may resubmit original recommendation, giving the reasons thereof, or submit a new and amended recommendation. Um, and talks a little bit more, but then it says, if the planning commission fails to deliver its recommendation to the governing body following the planning commission's next regular meeting after receipt of the governing body's report, the governing body shall consider such course of inaction on the part of the planning commission as a resubmission of the original recommendation and proceed accordingly. So if, uh, if you choose not to hear it, then your original recommendation will be resubmitted back to the board of county commissioners. 
Mr. Chairman, Ms. members Weidel. of the Planning Commission, Scott Weidel, um, I would recommend that you hear this item. And the reason why is because it was referred back to you all from the Board of County Commissioners, and they had some specific requests for consideration that they had sent it back with, uh, one being that one of the applicants has asked uh, that it not be approved on their property. There were two applicants involved in this case. And then the other uh, factors being uh, fire protection, also the density in the county. So we have some updates for you that we would like to share if you're willing to consider it. I'd like to hear this case. Right, I agree. I think we ought to hear the case so we understand what's happening here. So we will hear that case. The next case is uh, ZON uh, 2022 -0070. a zone change request in the city from uh, TF3, two family residential district to NR neighborhood retail district for retail generally located on the northeast corner of East 21st Street and North Minneapolis. Is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear this case? Okay, we'll hear this case. Next case is ZON 2022-00071. This is a zone change request in the city from SF5 single family to uh, office warehouse located on the northwest corner of North Arkansas Avenue and West 38th Street North. Is there anyone on the commission who wants to hear this case? Is there anyone from the public present who wants to hear this case? Yes. Okay, we will hear this case. And uh, the next uh, case is ZON 2022-00072. This is a uh, change request in the city from SF5 residential to TF3 to <clears throat> family residential on property generally located one quarter of a mile uh, north of East Pawnee and 200 feet west of South Broadway. Is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear this case? Is there anyone present from the public that would like to hear this case? Is there anyone listening virtually that would like to hear this case? We'll take this one on consent. Next we have ZON 2022-00073 with in connection with CON 2022-00051, zone change request uh, in the county from RR Rural Residential to SF20 Single Family uh, Residential District with uh, CON 2022-51 previously referenced to allow residential development with the ability to have the residents with accessory apartments generally located north of 37th Street, uh, north 7th, uh, 37th Street East and one quarter of a mile east of North Greenwich Road. Is there anyone on the commission who would like to hear this case? Is there anyone from the public present who would like to hear this case? Yes. Okay, we will hear this case. And the last case, I believe we'll hear this case because this case was uh, recommended uh, for denial by the uh, staff. Okay. Yeah. I should have asked you to hear uh, PUD uh, 2022, um, I can find it, 4.7, uh, uh, 
Yes. I, yes. You want to hear that? I yes. We'll hear please. that case. Thank you. May I interrupt? Yes. I will be abstaining from that PUD 2022-25. Okay. Thank you. Noted. Um, then I would entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to approve 4.1, 4.5, 4.6, 4.8, and 4.12. Okay, there's been a motion to approve these consent cases. Do I hear a second? second? Mr. Warren, second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we will go back to, um, where are we? 4.2, yes. I'd like to have the staff uh, uh, present this case to us. Yes, good afternoon, Planning Commission. This is Philip Ziebenbergen with Planning Staff. Did I miss it? Item 4.2 is a conditional use request. Pardon me just a second, sir. Yes. Do we want to go to the BZA first before we get into this? Uh, the reason we're uh, not going to the BZA first is it is tied to a case that we're hearing and so we're going to hear that case, and then we will adjourn and go to the BZA. Yeah. Okay, again, uh, CON 2249 is a conditional use request for a 195-foot cell tower located on the south side of East 71st Street South near Greenwich Road. This is in the Derby Influence area. They will also be considering this request of their planning commission this evening. Before I get into the discussion of the staff report, I want to make note of a situation that was brought to staff's attention. We have development application signs, which are listed in the application packets as a required piece of notification to be placed on the property at least 13 days prior to the public hearing. It was brought to staff's attention that the um, sign was not placed on the property until last Friday. Um, well outside of that 13-day window. Um, we talked it over with our legal counsel. The requirement for the notification sign is an MAPC policy. It is not part of the state statute notification requirement. The state statute notification requirement, which is the notification in the paper, as well as the notification letter that is sent to all property owners within the 1,000-foot radius, was met. They were um, mailed out, and that um, posting of the paper was submitted 20 days prior to the public hearing. Upon further review of the MAPC policy, the one that was approved is policy number 20, and I have copies at my desk for those who are interested. Um, but in general review, it was approved in 1984 um, by the city only. It has been a practice to have these signs available and required on properties in the county. But by policy, technically, it would only apply to um, applications in the city. That being said, it is part of our application packet and listed as a requirement to do so. So it is truly up to the Planning Commission today on whether or not this item should be heard or deferred, depending on whether or not you feel the notification requirements were satisfactorily met in this case with the, the uh, failure to place the sign on the property 13 days prior. If you would like, I can go through the presentation of the report, or if you want, we can um, discuss whether or not we should move forward with this item or if it is the will of the board to uh, defer it. Yes, Mr. Warren. My question would be for our attorneys, if we make a decision one way or the other on this, is that decision in any way in jeopardy as a result of not meeting the recommendation or the policy rather than a statute? Uh, this is Kirk Sponsel, Assistant County Counselor. Uh, yeah, just for, just for verification, we have met the statutory requirements, and I would say at this juncture that it's not even a... Uh, a MAPC policy that the uh, that the signs be placed out for 13 days prior in the county. That certainly is a requirement in the city, and I'm not going to opine on what would happen in those situations. But as for today, we have met the statutory requirements, and there is technically no policy that we've identified that would apply and would require this 13-day signage posting. 
so my opinion is since we've met all of the other requirements and we've got people here that want to speak on it, that today yes. would be the day to, to, to deal with it. I would like to speak on that, if I may. No, you, the there will be time for public comment. Opportunity to speak on that. Having heard that we've met the statutory requirements, I'm that, that we uh, go ahead and hear the case. Second. Second. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Sign. We will hear the case. Okay. So moving on with the staff report, um, we've already described where this location is. Again, it is in the Derby Influence area. AT&T is leasing uh, or intending to lease a portion of this property that you see on the screen. Uh, they will have a 70 foot by 70 foot compound uh, for which the equipment for the cell tower would be housed. Uh, the monopole structure would be in the center of that compound and reach to 195 feet in height. The reason for the conditional use is the uh, zoning is rural residential and the wireless communication master plan uh, states that towers exceeding 120 feet in height require a conditional use uh, in order to be approved. The tower has to comply with height compatibility setbacks because the properties surrounding this site are also zoned rural residential. The compatibility height standards for wireless communication facilities is one, a one-to-one -one ratio for, they has to be far, as far away from the property line of the adjoining property as it is tall. So at a minimum, this would have to be 195 feet away from an adjoining property line that's zoned residentially, and the tower exceeds that um, it's at least 200 feet away uh, based on the scale of the site plan, so it meets those height requirements. The state of Kansas in, in 2019 uh, adopted statutes related to wireless communication facilities. In your staff report are highlighted of five of the um, most prominent um, requirements in terms of what a board like this and even the county commission can and cannot consider when it comes to approval or denial of a cell tower. Uh, first and foremost, we cannot require them to co-locate. So it, determining if there's another tower or opportunity for a higher structure or a structure nearby, saying that they have to um, put their facilities on another structure. Um, we can't determine whether or not that we feel the service is adequate. We can't determine whether or not they feel the height of their tower is adequate. That's for them to decide based on the service parameters they want to provide. Um, we can't determine the type of transmission equipment or technology used by the applicant. And restrictions with respect to objects in navigable airspace and height limitations in proximity to civilian airports um, is governed by the Federal Aviation Administration. One of the standard conditions of approval for cell phone towers is that they provide a determination by the FAA that they are not a hazardous object in airspace, and that is true for this case as well. The properties surrounding this site are zoned rural residential, say for the northwest corner of 99th Street and 71st, which is zone MF18 um, due to multiple single family dwellings on one lot. The rest of them are zone rural residential and are developed with large lot residential development. If we can, there we go. Um, some portions of it are used for agriculture. Others are, uh, again, just more larger acreages. The property is unplatted. Um, platting is not required unless um, the applicant proposes a 50-year lease or longer. Um, they do have to get a building permit for this, and there are site review standards that will have to be met um, in order to get a building permit. Regarding the comprehensive plan, again, this is in the Derby Influence area, so our plan more or less defaults to um, whether or not the Derby um, comprehensive plan identifies this to be appropriate. Again, the Planning Commission will be hearing it tonight and providing a recommendation as well. Overall staff is recommending approval subject to the conditions in your staff report. Again, one of those is that it um, meet FAA requirements for a no, hazard, no hazardous object affecting navigable airspace. Staff has heard um, public comment from this and I believe those individuals are here to speak. They also provided a packet that was emailed to you earlier this week. That packet of information is also on your desk as well. 
And uh, this is in County District 5, which does not, well, it has a citizen's advisory board, but that advisory board does not consider planning items. And I can stand for any questions. Uh, Mr. I, don't, I don't have a question. I just have notification purposes. I've had some ex parte communication on this item. Okay, noted. Mr. Green. Notice that uh, this property is located in the uh, in the 100-year floodplain, and it also appears that the uh, actual site uh, that they are planning on building this uh, cell phone tower is in a regulatory floodway. Um, in order to get building permits, they'll have to get a, a letter of map revision or map amendment from FEMA. Is that correct? Most likely, either way, the, the location of it related to the floodway and floodplain will be addressed at the time of building permits. If, in fact, this uh, specific site is located in the floodway and they are not granted permission, will the applicant have to come back and uh, reapply for another location on this property? Yes, because the legal description they provided to us only encompassed the 70 foot by 70 foot compound. This conditional use does not apply to the larger parcel. So they can't necessarily just choose a different location within the same parcel. So they would have to come back. My understanding is they would have to come back and reapply and identify a new site and go through the public hearing process. Thank you. Any other questions of uh, staff from the commission? Okay, is the agent or applicant present? Please state your uh, name and address and you will have 10 minutes to uh, address this. Okay, thank you for your time this afternoon. My name is Glenn Clocky and I'm the applicant for uh, this, this proposal in front of you. We represent AT&T in this matter and my address is 5055. Highway N, uh, Cottleville, Missouri, 63304. So the one thing I do want to address is the floodplain question is that we are well aware that this site was lo is lo located in the floodplain. The equipment is designed to be five feet out of the flood floodplain. All the equipment will be above above flood flood level. So there, we've taken that into consideration. If if it's in the floodway, there could be other requirements for that. Is that right. not correct? Yes, and we'll we will we'll follow whatever the city requires us to do, whatever kind of uh, uh, whatever we need to get. Are there any other questions of the agent? Do you have anything else you want to say at this time? I do not. The end. <laughs> yes, we're yeah we're 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 AT and T's trying to fill up. A huge coverage coverage grab with this tower to uh, provide coverage for the city of the, the west side of uh, or the east side of the city of Derby and Sedgwick County. This site we have been working on for three plus years. This is a critical site for AT and T. Um, this site is is necessary. They have a huge coverage gap in that area that they're trying to provide coverage for uh, the county and the city of Derby. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Is there anyone uh, present from the public that would like to uh, make comments on this case? Please state your name and address, and you will have three minutes to uh, make your presentation. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Jennifer Harper. I live at 70, uh, 7010 South 99th Street, Derby, Kansas, 67037. Uh, before I begin, I would like to comment on the sign um, that was was talked about. Uh, the sign was put up on Friday the 13th between 2.30 and 3.30 in the afternoon. As we all know, that is a holiday weekend, and uh, the whole idea of the sign as listed in the conditional use requirements, which is quite detailed as a local uh, 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 ordinance, that the sign is to be put up they go into great detail about exactly how the sign should be, at what corner it should be, so that it can be seen from every angle of the road, from every right-of-way. Uh, but yet it seems to be so insignificant today when we know that they put it up on Friday the 13th between 2.30 and 3.30 on a holiday weekend 
at which people will be going home and they won't be coming back to that area until Tuesday. Then we have Tuesday and we have Wednesday. And today is, fr is Thursday, and this is when the hearing is. So the whole idea was to notify all the people in that area of what's going on, and instead they were a week late in putting it up to begin with, and then they put it up late on a Friday before a holiday weekend, and it really only let, was up for two days where normal activity and traffic would be there. I think that uh, it's remiss of me to not mention the fact that the whole idea of that sign, and again, you went into detail in paragraphs of the situation of the sign, of what direction it should point. So it seems to me, by the, by the emphasis you all put on it as a conditional use requirement, uh, that it seemed pretty important then, because it's to notify the people that are a thousand and one foot away from this uh, radiation emitting tower. All right, so uh, I guess uh, you know there's no no reason to go on there because uh, uh, frankly I think at the at the very least it should be uh, postponed and delayed for the next meeting so that everybody in that area has the right to see what's going on and what's coming up because you know. It's, it's kind of strange that it was set right before a holiday weekend, only leaving two days of normal activity. People are out of town. This is not right. You guys put a great amount of detail in how the sign should be listed, how it should be. So I don't know. Is there any way that that could be reconsidered? I'm just talking about a delay. I don't think that's really too much to ask. When you're talking about they were already six days behind on the guidelines. You guys have two or three paragraphs about how to how to put the sign. You want it just so. You want it. Uh, I mean, but all of a sudden it's nothing. I mean, they require. It says in you've got it in your application. This is a conditional use application. So, I mean, how is it that, that we can just cut a week off of it and it's okay? I, I mean, is that is there any way that we can reconsider that? I mean, I'm just talking about two weeks down the road, just to give the people. I mean, that's the whole idea of it, is to give people notification. Tim, your time is up. Uh, do you have any other issues I would like, to, like yes. to cover? I can give you another two minutes. All right. Uh, I provided some literature. 5G is extremely harmful to your health, especially when you live near a cell tower. Many insurance companies, I'm not sure if you're aware, exclude damages that are caused by electromagnetic waves, especially when you are in close proximity of a cell tower. How can you possibly calculate the risk of something that's never been done, okay? Due to the effects of the, of the immune system, uh, the Merriam-Webster Medical Dictionary has even created a new disease called microwave sickness. 5G uses between 24 and 300 gigahertz of frequency. A microwave uses 2.45 gigahertz frequency. The higher the frequency, uh, the more dangerous to living organism. Now, I would like to uh, cite quickly a German study. Uh, doctors did a uh, thousand patients living close to a cell tower for 10 years to affect their uh, cancer risk. Proportions, the newly developed cancer cases were three times higher for those living within 1,300 feet, a quarter of a mile, of a cellular tower. In addition, the patients became ill with cancer an average of eight years earlier. I live a thousand feet from the cell tower. tower. A distance of 1,300 feet is a particular importance. The radiation at that distance is the inner area, is a hundred times greater than the outer area. In six to ten years, the cancer risk jumps more than three percent for those living in the 1,300 foot from a cell tower. Now, DNA single strand uh, breaks, oxidative damages, disruptions of cell metabolism, increased blood-brain barrier permeability, Disruption to blame glucose metabolism, generation of stress proteins. These are all bad things, but I want to go, this is particularly interesting. Uh, effects on the skin. The human body has between 2 million and 4 million sweat ducts. Our sweat ducts act like a raised antennas when exposed to these wavelengths. Meaning that we would become more conductive. A New York study stated that the analysis of penetration depth show that more than 90%, 90% transmitted power is absorbed through the epidermis and the dermis I'm, layers. I'm sorry, uh, your time is up. Uh, May I please request two more minutes? I wanted an uh, answer on that thing uh, earlier. We stated in the opening comments that uh, 
people have three minutes to comment on this. I will say we all uh, did receive a copy yes. of this document that you're referring to about the hazards of cell towers. Uh huh. What I would like to do now is uh, call on staff to address this issue about the posting of the uh, sign. May I? I'm sorry, you're done. I would like to address a golden rule issue, if I may, just real quickly, please, briefly. Uh, regarding the sign, Mr. Duell, uh, I believe uh, County Councilor Kirk Sponsel addressed that to where the NAPC policy that is referenced to is was adopted by the city of Wichita, and it's been a practice to have signs out in the county, but the policy does not specifically address county cases. But this but Kirk, Kirk Sponsel, Assistant County Councilor. Yeah, uh, the the beginning of the policy says at the time an application for rezoning property in the city of Wichita is filed, and then it goes on from there. There's no indication that this is meant to be applied to the unincorporated area, even though there may be some reference in general in some of our applications. Um, the the clear wording of the policy indicates it's only geared towards the city of Wichita. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak on this? Yes. Please approach the podium. You have three minutes. Please state your name and address. Mike Harper, 7010 South 99th Street East, Derby, Kansas. Municipalities across the country have passed ordinances prohibiting cell facilities in residential areas because of health risk. We must not allow outdated federal FCC standards and industry-driven authority to usurp our common sense and ability to use reason to protect ourselves from this new high-tech 4G, 5G cell towers near homes. It's constant exposure day and night. You can't turn it off. In 2019, Environmental Health Trust sued the U.S. government for failing properly to review laws on wireless radiation exposure and won. Now the U.S. FCC has mandated to re respond to the court mandate, respond to the court decision to continue to advocate for proper review of scientific evidence because the FCC has still not responded to the court. Derby 2040 vision plan goes all the way east to Greenwich Road. To say this is not in urban growth area because it's on a small plain, a small floodplain property doesn't mean it won't be developed all around it. Spring Ridge homes start 1,300 feet to the west of the tower. In December 2020, AT&T proposed this tower 2,000 feet to the southwest of Powell's property. Kathy Sexton, Derby manager at the time, said the tower is in the backyards of homes. It is in the growth area of Derby. It is, in, it is not in compliance with Derby's comprehensive plan and it could be hard for someone in the area to sell their homes because sellers may not be able to get financing through VA loans because the tower and many people who work at McConnell Air Force Base choose Derby to live in. This tower is 75 foot taller than the tallest water tower in Derby. Everyone wants better cell phone service, but there is a better way to do it. This would be most financially beneficial option for AT&T, but it's not beneficial for residents. In some areas with new towers, Property values have decreased by up to 20%. An overwhelming 94% of home buyers and renters surveyed by the National Institute of Science, Law, and Public Policy say they are less interested and would pay less for property located near a cell tower antenna. You shouldn't be putting cell towers in the middle of residential homes, rural or not. They should be an industrial commercial on land far from people's homes. This tower would be about 400 foot from our property line, about 1,000 foot from our home. It's 1,300 foot from Spring Ridge homes. You say denial would represent the loss of economic opportunity to the applicant and landowner. Approval would represent loss of economic opportunity for us to develop our land, to sell a lot or build a home on it or sell our existing home. You say it's better for cell service. I've lived here since 1999. I've never not been able to use my cell phone or the internet. This tower is said to be for Rose Hill, Mulvane, and Derby. I can't help but think it would be better suited if it was outside the Derby 2040 vision east of Greenwich Road. It's higher ground, the tower would not have to be as tall, and it would probably work much better. Yes, I do. 
AT&T has a new tower getting ready to go online across the street from Lowe's and Derby. Why can't we wait until it goes online? It's supposed to be online in March. We can see how well the cell service is then. We got one more thing. Relative gain to the public health, safety, and welfare compared to the loss in value or hardship imposed upon the applicant. The protection of public health, safety, and welfare is the basis of zoning. The relationship between the property owner's right to use and obtain value from their property and the city's responsibility to its citizens is weighed. So your, your job is to protect the health and welfare of people. Can I have the, one more sentence? Let me address a couple of questions um, or a couple of concerns that were brought up. The the new tower that is that is scheduled to, to go online in the city of Derby is is a designed uh, tower. It doesn't take into consideration other areas. When AT and T designs their network, they design these towers to cover a certain parameter, which is I don't know what 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 the the, uh, the distance from that tower will cover, but it, that that particular tower will cover a certain area. This tower is designed to cover a second area that that is they have defic deficient coverage in. So I mean to say that you know wait for another tower to come online, um, it just doesn't work. It's it's already been laid out. They they do these these designs years in advance. And as far as moving the tower, we have we've looked at this tower. Uh, we've been working on this tower for three years. To so just say let's move it a mile away is just you know you can't do that nowadays. The, the systems that they're designing with right now are systems that are pretty mature. So they're e they're either designing a capacity site or a, a covered site. This site is a little bit of both. It's, it is to to fill in a hole, but it's also going to take up capacity for their surrounding sites, which is why there is a, a site that's coming online because Derby has not had good coverage from AT&T. So to say, just move this where it's higher on a hill. Being higher on a hill isn't always the best thing you can do. Sometimes that is, is it is, does it work because the signal will then carry too far. So that's why we are staying in this area. That's why we're asking for this tower in this area. We did move it from uh, another location that was on this property. We lowered the tower height from two, I think that, that particular application was at 275 feet. We have lowered this to 195. We've put it behind another grove of trees. Aesthetically, I know you're gonna be able to see it. I'm not gonna say you can't see this tower, but it, it's hidden between, between the, the subdivision, it's further away from the subdivision that, that, that the first application was close to. And we've changed the tower type from a lattice type tower to a monopole. Um, which is what the city asked us to do. So I have any other questions I will be glad to answer. Yes. What's, yeah. your, um, what's your rebuttal to the 5G? The rebuttal to the 5G is that, number one, the FCC releases all these frequencies to these carriers. It's, you know, every carrier gets a parameters of, of what they can broadcast in, what they can receive in, what, the, what they can broadcast out in. We are well within the FCC standards. They set the standards, the carriers don't. So the FCC has, has said these frequencies are safe. That's what the carriers are, are required to, to, to use. They cannot go outside those parameters. Mr. Warren, did you have something? Are there any other questions or comments uh, from the commission? 
Okay, thank you for your uh, comments. Thank you. Pardon? We'll bring it back to this the is, uh, commission. This is, this point. Sorry, this is Kirk Sponsel, Assistant County Counselor. I just wanted to steer the uh, steer the analysis of this uh, application just slightly. I just wanted to reference back to the statute uh, that uh, that planning staff provided previously. There were a couple elements that should not be under consideration per statute. Just touching upon some of them that I've heard uh, maybe referenced by either uh, outside parties or by the applicant themselves. But we're not supposed to evaluate an application based on the availability of other potential locations for the placement of wireless support structures or wireless facilities. Um, we shouldn't require an applicant to submit information about or evaluate an applicant's business decisions with respect to the applicant's design service, customer demand for service, or quality of the applicant's service. And also, there's a limitation that we should not... Uh, impose any compliance measures for radio frequency emissions or exposure from wireless facilities that exceed the requirements of the Federal Communications Commission rules for radio frequency. So I just wanted to bring that to the uh, to the commission's attention before you proceed with your discussions. Thank you for those comments. Okay, we will bring it back to uh, the commission now. Uh, are there any further uh, comments or discussions regarding this? Okay, yeah, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Chairman, uh, since this was in the county, we, un we understood about the sign. I'm sure that notification was a thousand feet. Uh, so I would guess most of the people around there got some notification. So I'm going to move to approve for staff comments. So, okay, we will entertain a motion uh, regarding this case. Oh, you just said. Okay, second. We're good. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, motion carries unanimously. The next case is uh, 00050. We uh, have the staff uh, give us a report on that. Good afternoon again, Philip Ziebenbergen for the record. Con 2250 is a request for a 150 foot tall cell tower located at 14200 West 21st Street North. It's on the north side of West 21st Street, about a half a mile west of North 135th Street West. It is between, if you're familiar with the areas, between on a property between the Northwest YMCA and the St. Teresa Hospital property. This application, as I mentioned, is for a 150-foot tower for AT&T. It is a very similar um, setup for from the last case, so I'll be a little bit more brief on this one. Again, it's a 70 foot by 70 foot compound that will have solid screening around it. The property is on SF20 and requires a conditional use because like rural residential, anything exceeding 120 feet in height requires a conditional use. This uh, application, this tower is more than 150 feet away from any adjoining property that is zoned residentially, so it meets the high compatibility standards. The same rules from the state statute apply. Surrounding properties are majority zone SF20. That's kind of the light peach color that you see here. Uh, they are zoned with um, agricultural uses or single family homes. Um, some of it's a mix of that. You have SF5 in the city. This LC and SF5 property here is a Northwest YMCA. The PUD property to the west is St. Teresa Hospital. This little square right here is a 150 foot cell tower uh, just outside the hospital property or just along the access drive to the hospital property. Uh, this is within the Wichita growth area. So the comprehensive plan uh, comes into play or our comprehensive comes into play. Um, the comprehensive plan identifies this site as appropriate for new employment which supports expanded commercial or employment opportunities in the area. 
Uh, it also identifies it uh, as part of their, uh, I believe, their rural growth area, but the majority of the site is in the new employment area. And the wireless communications master plan um, identifies that you know 120 feet could have been done by administrative permit. 150 feet is only 30 feet taller, and it's uh, within a quarter mile of an additional cell tower that is 150 feet that was approved uh, some time ago. Staff is recommending approval subject to the conditions of your staff report, which are the same as the last case. Again, FAA will also have a determination on this as well. There have been some public comment regarding this, regarding effects on property values, uh, visual impact, uh, economic hardship for selling properties in the future, possible health uh, issues and things of that nature. But I believe I will leave the um, specific comments to those who wanted to hear this case uh, go through. This is the elevation of the tower. You can see it has 18 T's, but it also could be used for co-location in the future. This is looking at the property where the compound will be. Uh, this is part of the subject property. Those are their outbuildings. This is looking at the parent property and their kind of acreage with uh, where their outbuildings are and their residence is. This is looking to the south. It's a field at this point. Um, I believe most of this site's in the city of Wichita. Over to the west over here, you're out in the county. This is probably out in the county um, with the single family homes that are to the southwest of the site. This is the cell tower that's to the west um, near the hospital. This is looking to the northwest behind the site. This is the grove of trees that blocks the view of the tower from the properties to the north. And this is looking north at the property directly west of the site. And this is the YMCA to the east. With that, I can stand for any questions. We have any questions uh, from the uh, commission at this time? Okay, will the agent or applicant uh, please come forward? You have 10 minutes. You want me to state my name and address again? Do you need that again? My name is Glenn Clocky. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, my name is Glenn Clocky. I'm with Network Real Estate LLC. Address is 5055 Highway N, Cottleville, Missouri, 63304. We represent AT&T uh, in their application matters. So this particular tower is going to be a 150-foot monopole. We have leased uh, an area that is 70 by 70, but where we will fence in a uh, 60 foot by 60 foot area that will have a six foot uh, chain link fence above it. Uh, we will enter off of right off of 21st Street. We're going back through our landlord's property and we will build an access road, a 12 foot access road that'll be gravel from uh, we're, we're going to drive in down their driveway to a point where we're going to come off their driveway and then build to our communication tower. This particular site um, originally was a little bit closer to the to 21st Street. Uh, we had to move it back because it too was in, um, it was located in a floodplain. We moved it by moving it back, which actually moved it further from the road. We got it out of the floodplain so that we wouldn't have to deal with that issue. Um, it is co-locatable. This tower will hold up to uh, three additional carriers if need be. Um, and it is built to be structurally sound to hold that many if other carriers come along. And I am open for any questions. So this, this tower also is, is another tower that is, that is uh, designed to um, fill in a huge coverage gap that AT&T has. It's to, it's to cover the hospital in, a, in an area around there that's about a three-mile radius from each, each or six-mile radius from the middle of this tower that this one is designed to cover. Are there any questions of the agent? Thank you for your comments. We will now call on anybody from the audience who would like to speak on this. Please come forward. You've got three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. Did we have somebody that wanted to hear this case? I just 
Oh, okay. Access issues. Okay, is there anybody virtual that would like to uh, speak on this case? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Move, seven, approve, six, seven, approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Motion carries. Okay. The next case we have is 00050. Uh, no, excuse me, 5 2. Once again, good afternoon. Philip Ziebenbergen for the record. Con 2252 is not a cell phone tower. It is a, <laughs> we got to have some humor. It's a long day. Uh, it is a request for group residence limited on a property located at 441 South Morningside Drive. As you see on the screen, it is on the west side of South Woodlawn, about a three blocks north of East Kellogg. The proposed use of this is to expand an existing Home Plus facility that operates within the residence at this time. The Home Plus is a licensed facility through the Kansas Department of Aging Disability Services, or KDADS. Um, it is defined in your staff report. The state licenses these facilities for up to 12 people. It is a use that is defined appropriate within the group home definition in our zoning code, which is allowed within all zoning districts, generally for different types of protected classes. The applicant is looking to expand their use. Um, the group home only allows up to eight residents in the home plus two staff members. The applicant is looking to expand it to allow for caring for more residents per their license, which again is by the state, of up to 12 residents plus two staff members, which would bring the total population within the home to 14. Group residents limited allows up to 15 individuals unrelated by blood or marriage to cohabitate in a dwelling unit. Uh, and so it would cover the up to 14 individuals uh, that could be allowed in the dwelling. The, to accomplish the proposed expansion of the use, the applicant is intending, if the, ap if the application is approved, to expand the home. So north is down in this picture so you're it's a little bit backwards so this is this is morningside drive here this is woodlawn and so as you're looking up on the screen is south um, this is just reverse i didn't want the words to be upside down this is the existing home they've got a driveway for a side load garage off of morningside they're um, proposing an addition onto the home to accommodate additional residents in the home if the application is approved the addition to the home is an, uh, is an allowable addition, regardless if it was a single family home or a home plus facility. It meets the setback requirements. Uh, it is not something that wouldn't be out of the ordinary for just an average homeowner if they wanted to put this size of an addition onto their home apart from this application. So the, the um, detail of the application of whether or not the addition to the home can be allowed is really not a, a matter for discussion as it would be allowed based on the buildable area of the lot. They just would need to add on to the house in order to accommodate the number of residents that they want to have in the home. Along with the this application, and again, um, to Mr. McKay's point, is we will be hearing the associated BZA variants for this application after this conversation. When you get to group residence limited, your parking requir requirement changes from one parking space, off-street parking space per dwelling, to one parking space per bedroom. So if the addition is added onto the house, the applicant intends to have a total of 10 bedrooms within the structure of this home, which would bring the off-street parking requirement to 10. In addition to that, because it's zoned single family residential, you're not allowed to have off-street parking in your front setback or your side street setback. So that more or less would force them to do it somewhere in their backyard and you're paving a bunch of things. So I'll save this discussion for the parking reduction variance we'll be hearing in just a moment. Uh, but that's why the variance is associated with this is they do not want to um, have to provide 10 parking spaces for the, their clientele, which are, um, it's kind of end of life care and they do not drive and you have 
um, staff members and some visitors um, that do attend, but they're not they're not looking to I want to pave any portion of their lot because they want to retain the residential character of their lot. Regarding the comprehensive plan, the community investments plan identifies the site to be appropriate for residential uses. This includes a all types and densities of residences, including a special accommodations for the elderly, such as assisted living, um, congregate care, and nursing homes. It's also within the established central area, which the Wichita Places for People plan governs. Strategy number five states that it to provide a diversity of housing options to attract new residences and allow existing residents to remain within the ECA. The proposed group residence would permit additional residents to be served by the facility at this location. Um, it is, this area is identified as an area of stability um, and improvements in this area should be geared toward continuing the area's momentum and strengthening the established context. The site is currently used as a uh, group home and the structure retains the character of the residential neighborhood. Staff is recommending approval subject to the conditions in the staff report. One of them is limiting the population to 12 persons to be served in addition to two staff members for a total of 14. Um, another condition is that any addition to the structure shall retain and be compatible with the residential character of the existing home so that any addition onto the facility um, looks as if it was supposed to be part of the home and does not um, contrast in terms of where the addition is versus the new home, which would also uh, then have a negative reflection on the character and the architecture of the neighborhood. Uh, also, that the facility be managed with all the regulations required by the license for uh, the Kansas Department of Aging and Disability Services. Um, signs are only permitted by those allowed in the sign code for SF5 zoning. Um, and then with any conditional use, there's always the, um, if compliance becomes an issue, conditional uses can um, be revoked in the future. Properties surrounding this are all residentially zoned. Uh, you have those within the city limits of Wichita, which are on the northwest and south sides. And you can see there's single family homes here. The properties across Woodlawn are in the city of Eastboro. They are residentially zoned and develop residentially as, as well. The letter notification does go past city limit boundaries. It is a state statute. And so within the notification radius included the residences within Eastboro. And even if protests were to be filed against this, again, the protest petition is a state statute. So city limit boundaries do not affect whether or not individuals within Eastboro would have the opportunity to protest this case as well. Go through the site photos real quick as a site plan. This is the home that the group home currently operates out of. This is their um, drive, again, side low garage. Um, over here with the masonry wall is Woodlawn Boulevard. This is looking across to the east into Eastboro, the residential homes. This is looking to the southwest of the property, the next door neighbor. Properties to the northwest across the street and the property directly north across the street as well. I've had significant public comment on this case. I provided you all with an email uh, regarding emails that I've received from residences in the area within the neighborhood. Uh, you all received that in an email earlier this week. I will let those in attendance speak regarding their concerns and I can stand for any questions. Yes, Ms. Foster. Philip, approximately what day of the week what time were you there taking these photos and I didn't see any cars parked on the streets? Did I you? don't remember what day of the week, likely a Tuesday given my schedule. Usually I think this was probably about mid-morning. Um, it was definitely not around a shift change, I can tell you that, which would probably be more early morning and later afternoon or evening. Um, definitely within the eight, probably between 10 and noon, um, I believe is when I took these photos. Right. 
Thank you. Uh, speaking of that, I, I apologize um, for interrupting real quick. There was a, a photo included in the staff com in the comments that were in your staff report that were submitted by a resident nearby. I want to draw your attention to something you were provided in the email, and I believe the applicant will address this, but he provided a, a rebuttal response in email that I supplied to you as well regarding the presence of the number of cars that were seen in that photo. So I will defer to the applicant to address um, the photo of the number of cars that were in the photo that is in your staff report that was submitted by an area resident. Thank you, Philip. Yeah, Mr. McKay, can you tell us how long this uh, business, this uh, place has been in, in business presently? My understanding it's been the better part of 30 years, but I can defer to the applicant to tell you specifically. Thank you. Mr. Warren. Uh, uh, go ahead. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Oh, I just wondered how many employees drive and need a place to park and how many more will be needed? And then what about visitors and their cars? I mean, I, it's just a circle drive. They, this is the house across the street. The okay. property in question has a, a L shaped driveway, um, off of Morningside get back here. Oh, yeah. There you okay. go. Um, I believe right now the facility has one employee. If it is allowed to expand, I believe they will be getting two. Again, I'll defer to the applicant regarding the specifics of the information. They mm -hmm. would be able to park in the driveway regarding visitors. Uh, if their off-street park parking requirement is reduced, then any additional, some visitors could park in the driveway as well. Otherwise, they're doing on-street parking. But that is also the case for any type of visitors to anybody who owns a home in the area. They're not required to provide off-street parking for visitors to your home if you um, have an evening where individuals come over to for dinner or things like that. Yeah. And when you said they were in business 30 years, they they were in they've been in this particular house for 30 years. That is my understanding. But again, I will defer to the applicant. Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. McKay. Oh, oh, I'm Mr. sorry, Warren. Yeah, Mr. Warren. Philip, uh, <coughs> one of your conditions was complying with regulations and licensing requirements from the Department of Aging. Uh, is, would that be safe to assume that they would not be able to change the group setting to a different category, for example, juveniles or other? They, they're currently licensed as a Home Plus facility and in terms of if you have uh, juvenile care um, hold on let me let me take a moment here so I, I'm assuming are you talking about like for foster care if they were to change the nature I mean there's a, there's an image you have when you say you're dealing with aging if you change that dynamic it changes your thought about what what you're going what you're going to get as a neighbor well, it talks about item number three says the owner or the manager of the facility should comply with all regulations and licensings required by the Kansas Department of Aging and Disability Services. If it were to potentially want to change to like a group home for foster cares, that's licensed by a different state department. Would that, would that, so my question is, would, they, would the conditional use go away if they were to change? I will defer to legal counsel on that. The... The, the conditional use does not go away because there's no time limit on it, but in terms of how they could use the facility for a group residence might be limited because this is a group residence for a facility licensed by KDADS, not a facility licensed by another state organization. The conditional use runs with the property. It will remain. So they either can use the property for single family dwelling or some other SF5 permitted use, like a church, or a, the conditional use would authorize a group home with up to 12 uh, residents plus the two staff members. Uh, I understand, but we, we, we put in this that it is it has to comply with the Department of Aging. If you were to use it for foster care, would you go to the Department of Aging to, to control that? No. So the question is, does this limit this to aging because that's the only one that we've listed on here. I think, and I may be going out on a limb here, but I think KDADS is aging and disability services. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure that this is a limitation to a certain age group. I think this particular operator 
Um, knowing what I know about them for the years that I've known of this operator, it is always aged people, but I, th I think the agency, I'm not sure there's an age limit for what they license. Scott Wadle, Planning Department. I would say based on the conditions and the way that I read them, I would not interpret this to limiting it to uh, seniors or elderly that they would be providing care to. Um, this provides a conditional use to allow for the, the number of folks. Um, if, if you want to see that kind of limitation, <coughs> I think that that's something you would have to add to the conditions. But it would, I believe it would limit it to a facility licensed by KDADS and thank whatever you. spectrum of care they provide. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Oh, yes, Mr. Williams. Okay, any other questions? If not, we will call on the agent or applicant to speak. Uh, please state your name and address. You have 10 minutes. <clears throat> yes, my name is Doug Stark, and I live at 619 North Stratford, 67206. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. I'm not going to take anywhere near 10 minutes. Um, uh, very simply, uh, this home has been in operation, one of the questions, for 29 years. Uh, this was our second home. Um, we operate uh, eight homes across Wichita and care for 90-some uh, residents. This whole th concept, uh, the whole reason we did this was after eight years of caring for my grandparents, my dad's parents, uh, uh, we cared for them in many different ways, but we were not going to put them in a nursing facility. Uh, uh, they had Alzheimer's disease. We learned a lot about dementia. One of the things we certainly learned is for somebody that is thoroughly confused going into a large building uh, is just overstimulating the dining rooms two halls down to the right. Um, it's just not conducive to somebody who is now not thinking clearly. Everybody grew up in a home, and in our homes, uh, you know, the residents come in with their own furniture. They can bring their dog or their cat if they want. This is truly residential living, uh, but with professional care. Um, the photo that was submitted uh, uh, by Mrs. Baring and um, I... I uh, have all due respect for her, uh, but the photo was taken during a holiday party. Uh, so it's, you know, the question about, well, when were the photos taken by uh, Philip and what time of day? In general, there's going to be one, two, sometimes three cars along the front of the house, but there's never the nine or ten that were in that photo other than there being a holiday party, and that happens in front of any house anywhere. So uh, there's nothing that should be uh, worried about that. Um, there will just be two caregivers. The caregivers, and I don't know exactly how the regulations work. Uh, it, we're going to, we're, our goal is to have 10 residents, maybe 11, if we have a shared room there, but we're not even wanting to move to the 12. Uh, and the two caregivers that will be there, they, they come and go. So in all reality, there's 10 or 11 people living there with caregivers coming and going. Um, this is all going to be built in the back, as we've talked about, from the street view, from coming down Morningside. You're going to look at our house, which has great curb appeal, and none of that will change. So um, there's really not a... You know, not an issue I see there. Um, one thing that has been brought to my attention as I went around and talked to everybody as well, property values, property values. The thing we have is a track record. We've been doing this for 30 years. In those 30 years, I have not only taken three um, homes that we had that were comfort care homes that just didn't fit our model then. They were too small, whatever. Um, and... 
Uh, I have resold them back uh, to families. We did it on the market, uh, open market, Carnahan Group sold them, and they sold for value. So uh, plus, 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 again, in 30 years, I can't count how many homes next door, across the street, down the street, from one of my homes that has sold and has sold at, at, at value. So, and you know, you can reach out to the Wygan folks, you can reach out to the Carnahan people, they'll tell you that. One home directly across from a home I have on Talleyrand uh, sold uh, this last year for $403,000, which was market value. So um, I don't really see that there's any concern. We've proven over 30 years there's no concern about uh, values. Um, my investment's going to be three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. That surely will have to increase the values of the residents or the houses around that area. Um, talked about that. Um, w there was a flyer that was submitted, uh, and it talked about um, uh, traffic, uh, increased traffic, delivery trucks. Um, et cetera, et cetera. We have our groceries delivered once a week in an Econo van. We click list Dylan's, go pick up the groceries. They get dropped off at the house in a van. Possibly three, four times a year, there may be a Broadway medical truck pull up because they're bringing in a mechanical bed or taking out a mechanical bed. But again, that is... <laughs> Trust me, the number of people on that street or any street that are ordering everything from Amazon and those UPS trucks that all have horrible mufflers on them, and I think it's for a reason. I think it's a marketing thing. You know, my, our trucks go, Brrr. but in any case, there's a heck of a lot more of that stuff going on up and down the street than what we would present. Uh, in this case, there may be a couple, three more family members visiting, but that's it. Um, We've been good neighbors the whole time. We have a lawn service that uh, makes sure that our lawn is the nicest lawn on the block. And in fact, a couple of three years ago, we were voted as lawn of the week. So, you know, I, I was very honored by that, proud of that. Also, somebody ran into the uh, entry monument a few years ago and there was money raised. The uh, group came to me and said, hey, we need another, I think it was 350 bucks to top it off. And I gave the 350 bucks, and we replaced the monument. So, again, we really try to make sure our homes are as nice as they can be, not only for you guys, the neighbors, but also because we have we want our clients. I mean, nobody wants to place their loved one in a in a shack, and so you know we make sure that our homes are very presentable. Um, and the very last thing. I want to say is I got I did receive a text the other day over the weekend and here's what it was said it was by a lady named Cindy Doug just wanted you to know we are aware some of the neighbors are concerned about the traffic in your area due to your two nursing homes and have expressed their opinions via flyers FYI we are not part of the movement we feel your homes are necessary we must take care of our senior citizens in the respectful manner that one allows them to maintain their dignity. My mother was lucid, but had to be in a home. It was in the neighborhood out in the west part of Wichita. We want you to know we understand some of, your, of their concerns as to enlargement of facilities, but are not a part of that movement. Because of your company, we've also benefited as a community. Upkeep, comma, et cetera. The school also adds traffic in our community. I have worried about how fast people traveling through our neighborhoods, but those concerns were prior to you having your business. Thanks to you and your belief in our senior citizens, I love this neighborhood and think it's one of the best in Wichita. It's quiet and perfect for people who need quiet uh, and secure, a uh, quiet and secure neighborhood. Um, and I'll close by just saying, we, um, like I said, we entered this business specifically to care for elderly with dementia. And that's all we do is we care for elderly with dementia. And we have no plans or desire 
to uh, turn it into a foster care for kids or whatever. I mean, this is, we're, we're 30 years invested into this. We're really good at what we do when it comes to caring for dementia. And uh, we're going to, we're going to stick with that. Um, I think that's all I have. So, um, thank you. Bring it back to the uh, commission. Do you have any questions of the applicant? If not, is thank you for your comments. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to uh, say anything on this case? Please uh, approach the podium. You have three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. <coughs> Thank you. I'm Bill Townsley. I live at 300 Morningside, which is halfway in between the two comfort care homes. And I appreciate the public service of you commissioners. Uh, I have just a few, com few points I'd like to make. At the outset, I'll say Mr. Stark is a good neighbor. My concern is the future. What you're asking here is for a permanent change in the property. What the future holds then is problematic for the rest of us because we don't know. Uh, I, I don't like having a commercial entity in my neighborhood. I'd rather have a family. But again, I don't have a great concern with Mr. Stark's efforts to provide a good service to the community. My focus here is we don't know what happens in 10 years or 20 years or 40 years. Uh, there, are ch there are some distinctions here. I note that uh, I'm disappointed to hear the uh, that the staff has recommended this. Uh, clearly, staff didn't discuss this with the neighborhood. I'm sorry to also that the staff makes an analogy to people having visitors parking on the street. Um, that's different here. This is, we're talking about a home of potentially 12 people. So you have family members for 12. You have physical therapists, occupational therapists, dentals, delivery people, hospice, musical volunteers, nurses, and family members for 12 people. To make an argument that this isn't going to increase the traffic or increase the number of vehicles on the street is ludicrous. Uh, simply put, it does increase. Mr. Stark is a good neighbor, but he can't control what his employees do. He talked about a, a, a UPS truck with a loud muffler. I can tell him he had an employee that drove a, drove a gold 300 Chrysler for a number of years with a bad muffler who would drive up the street at 40 miles an hour, drop somebody off, and drive back the other way. And that happened every day that that employee was being dropped off. By the same token, he can't control what his employees do. The issue here, again, is looking to the future. We have a street that's four blocks long with 32 houses. Mr. Stark now has two of them. And... Uh, Again, those are commercial entities in a residential neighborhood. Today, as he said, he can sell one of his houses if he doesn't use it or if he doesn't like it. Add another 1,800 square feet here. You can't sell that house again. It doesn't fit within the neighborhood. Uh, and if his intention is to spend 350000 then find another house. But again, we're, we're opposed to the conditional use permit changing the neighborhood forever. And that's what a conditional use does. And as I understood from listening to the commissioners and staff, no one here knows what kind of facility may be there in the future. Uh, is it a foster care? Oh, sorry, I guess I give me another minute if you would. Okay, I'll give you one more minute. All right, that's all I need. Again, my emphasis here is what happens in the future. Uh, and I... Uh, I think that if you allow this, that permanently alters the character of our neighborhood. It's a small neighborhood. It's been there for 75 years. Uh, I've lived there for more than 30 years. I've been there longer than Mr. Stark's uh, commercial entities. Uh, it's clear that uh, he provides a good service for a certain segment of the, of the community. I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with him increasing his presence in this facility on a permanent basis when we don't know what's going to happen to that property in 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. So I'd ask that you oppose this or deny the request. Uh, next uh, person to speak, 
Please uh, limit your comments to new items that haven't already been covered. Yes, sir. Name and address, please. <clears throat> my name's, uh, my legal name is John Mitchell Crouch, Jr. Uh, everybody calls me Mitch Crouch. I live at 6312 East English. I uh, had prior lived on Courtley, so I've lived in the neighborhood for over 30 years. Um, I'm not going to go over what Mr. Townsley talked about, but my concerns are exactly what he talks about. Uh, I've been in residential lending uh, for over 40 years, one to four family residential lending. One of the things about this neighborhood is it's a single family residential. There's not even a duplex. There's no multifamily housing in this area. It is all single family. The one thing about the concerns about traffic happen to be is there are no sidewalks in our area. There are a lot of people that walk the areas. And as if you saw the, the pictures um, that were shown, there are no cars on the streets. It doesn't matter what time of the net time of the day that you're here, there are no cars on the streets so we can walk. If there are cars on the streets, it is a hazard for us to walk around the cars. And today I went, drove my neighborhood, and the only cars that were on the streets are in front of the comfort homes. And um, so uh, again, um, today I think Doug, uh, Mr. Stark does a great job of keeping up the properties, but having more people there is not what our neighborhood wants. If, I'm sorry, I, you probably don't have a chance to interview the people. If we have to, we will go to every one of our neighborhood people and make sure that you hear exactly what we feel about having more people living in the neighborhood that is not designed for that. So thank you so much for your time and uh, our recommendation is that it is turned down. Um, the current use that is being used for is fine, but no more. No more. Thank you so much. Please deny. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this case uh, from the public? Please uh, state your name and address. You have three minutes, and please confine your comments to uh, items that have not been discussed. Good afternoon. I'm Diane Baring. I live at 421 Morningside, which is right next door. I won't reiterate what I've already said in the letter that you have in your packet. So what I'm going to say is kind of jumping around, but just piggybacking on points that have already been brought up. Um, the, uh, the picture that was shown of all the cars front in front, I took that picture. And as Doug said, and as I said in my email that was with that, that is not an everyday occurrence, but it is not unusual. It, it happens quite frequently. And I want to pass out to you. First picture is a picture of the block directly to the south of us. This is peach tree. I don't know if you can see it, but if anybody wants to come look. Uh, the condition of the street is what I'm wanting you to look at. The second picture is the block directly north of us. Again, I want you to look at the condition of the street. And the third is Morningside. And you can see that it's in bad need of repair. Um, as far as the number of, of cars out front and the picture that I took, uh, Doug said that that was a holiday party. I, I couldn't remember. <laughs> I pulled out my phone, and it was taken on December 29th at 4.03 in the afternoon. So not sure if that was considered certainly not Christmas party. I wouldn't think it'd be New Year's, so I'll let you decide on that. Uh, as I said in the letter, and for those who haven't read my letter, when my husband needed care, I moved him in. Comfort care is great neighbors. Doug and Casey are great to work with. I moved him in there because it is a residential setting. It's a home setting. There were six to seven residents there the whole time my husband lived there. 
12 people is not a family setting. 14 people is not the family setting that I would want the way I wanted when my husband lived there when there were six or seven residents. And if you have 10 bedrooms in a house, we're not going to be able to keep it a, a family residential neighborhood with 10 bedrooms. Well, even us Catholics don't have that big of families anymore. So um, that's all I had to say. Just wanted to hit those points. I ask that you deny this. We're not asking that, that they be taken out of the neighborhood. They make great neighborhood, great neighbors. It's a great facility, but we just don't want them to expand. Thank you for your time. Are there any other speakers from the public at this time? Online Please speakers. Approach the uh, podium, state your name and address, and please limit your comments to things that have not already been discussed. You'll have three minutes. Clay Walter, 406 South Morningside. Uh, everything they said is true. Um, what I was just wanting to concern is when you're talking about a protected class, which is the, the aged are and those, is that going to be, how far does that go? You know, that where does that, does that mean drug rehab? Does that mean if they were to sell this home, because nobody knows what they'll do in the future, I know his daughter wants to take over the business, but things change, what else could go in that home of 10 bedrooms in a single family home residence? So that concerns us. Um, was mentioned that businesses can't park in the front lawn the care home that's on Peachtree, nearly directly behind this home, isn't owned by Mr. Stark, but they park tons of cars in their front yard. It's not the look that you want to see in a residential neighborhood. It's a big, brand new, curved driveway <clears throat> that they have a ton of cars parked in all the time. Um, again, different facility, different provider, but that shows you what can happen when you have conditional approval forever. Um, that is pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak at this time? Please state your name and address. You have three minutes. Please confine your comments to uh, topics that have not already been covered. My name is Dean Pattison, 422 South Morningside Street. We live just caddy corner on the other side of the street. I appreciate everybody's time and uh, respect Doug and what he's done. feel the same way. Doug came to me and he said, you know, he's not looking to do anything more than 10 people. He's got eight now. He wants to put two people in. That would be the maximum. And if, if that would put in the, the, the request, I might be on board with it. I don't understand how he can spend $350,000, hire one person, and only add two people to the home and make money. That's up to him. But I'm also worried about property tax increases. He mentioned how his values would go up with the additional uh, improvements to his home. Is that going to impact our property tax rate? So things like that. And the, the road condition is horrible. So all these things, uh, in addition to what's already been said, uh, I think, go against uh, approving this uh, zoning uh, change. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, comment on this? Please state your name and address. You have three minutes, and please do not repeat anything that uh, previous okay. speakers have done. Okay. I covered. want uh, Dan Dockin, 426 Courtley, uh, uh, in the neighborhood. I've been in the neighborhood uh, close to 12 years now, and honestly I say uh, the way uh, Comfort Care has operated in the past uh, with an eight bed limit that the, that Kate Ads puts on a home plus, that was uh, hardly noticeable to me, and I don't live on the street and that, but you know, uh, other than uh, you know, a little more parking on the street and that, but. I think if you go uh, to, you know, KDADS bumped up the uh, limit from 8 to 12, and, you know, that's a 50% increase. And, you know, I think that, you know, what that does is it really puts it over the limit where it might fit into a neighborhood like we have. So far, uh, the way Doug operates them, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, not really a big impact. 
but uh, the addition of more people there, you know, definitely will increase uh, uh, parking on the street, I believe. I mean, I've been uh, uh, an architect that's done uh, memory care buildings for 35 years, and it's, you know, one thing I, I know about this type of resident, typically family members are a big part of giving care. They don't just say, you know, care for them at home until they can't anymore and then say, okay, you're in this home, see you later. It's usually like, you know, you're, you're going to that house and giving care to your parents. And uh, so, uh, you know, there is uh, uh, an increased number of cars that will, will be in that area. Uh, and it's, uh, I mean, the other quick thing is uh, you know, just this, uh, it seems like there's a lot of conditional uses being granted in our neighborhood, in that northeast quadrant of our neighborhood. The uh, classical school has bought three houses that they, they're putting, uh, you know, big classrooms in their backyard. They're getting ready to do a metal building addition on the, in the backyard of one of theirs. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's kind of, I mean, that, corner of our neighborhood is really eroding I feel like because uh, you know uh, there's another care home that's on Peachtree that was referred to that that has all kinds of traffic they expanded into their bedroom to add uh, garage to add beds so it's kind of a similar thing hey you get you know as many beds as the state allow, allows you to have so you can increase your profitability but it does Definitely I don't have know, an they impact. don't allow them to turn those. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody speaking remotely. Uh, sure, your time is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to speak? And again, I'd like to remind you, we want to give everybody a chance to speak, but please limit your comments to uh, material that has not already been covered. Please state your name and address, and you've got three minutes. My name is Karen Townsley, and I live at 300 South Morningside Drive, right in between the two comfort care homes. And I just want you all to know that we are opposed to this addition onto this home. It will change the neighborhood. Thank you. We have another speaker. Please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. My name is Jody Burt, and I live at 232 South Morningside, and uh, I have been there for 22 years, and I live catty-cornered to the other one just down the road, and the, the traffic is much worse than he lets on it to be. Our group, I believe, possibly are the older ones, so we have ambulances that come by and, and end up, you know, scaring us, not knowing what's going on across the street on a, on a more than regular basis just because we've been there so long. I have raised four children, six total in that neighborhood, and uh, the fact that the kids, I've had people pr pulling in my driveway when my kids are out in my driveway in the tri on their tricycles. So they're constantly in my driveway, flashing the light. My husband is bedridden. He has congestive heart failure. And so we're seeing flashes of light through our front window because we sleep in the, in the front living room. And um, so it's a, it's a constant thing. This is not OK. This is not a normal to, to constantly having people turning around and driving into our driveway. They can't go around the street. They have to come in and pull in and pull out. So um, the mask, the rubber gloves, the trash that is left behind. My, my son alone has picked up 10. You know, it's a constant thing that with more people comes more responsibility, and we have more things that we have to tend to and take care of because there are more people in that neighborhood besides the people who care about it and want to take care of it. So I ask that you not grant this. Do we have any other speakers from the public? 
State your name and address. You have three minutes. My name is Bob Love. I live at 131 South Morningside. I was born at 119 South Morningside. So I've lived there more or less for 50 years. I know Doug. I know that he's a good man, that he's trying to help families. Families are under duress right now. And it's not because of you and the Planning Commission. It's because of the system that we have that's operating. What I'm asking you, and I walk the block in front of the care homes every, twice a day, every day. What was said about trash is true. Uh, it always bothers me when I walk by and there's trash. Uh, the other thing I would say is you just can't tell who's in the neighborhood, who belongs there anymore and who doesn't. I had a guy parked in, on a big motorcycle in front of my house for 20 minutes the other day, and I didn't know what he was trying to do. And the motorcycle was going, and he was going to pick somebody up. And it's just it just changes the whole the whole shape of things. Um, I am I think that Doug has done a great job of helping to accommodate uh, people who have needs, but we also have other needs in the neighborhood. There are there are there are two young children on the block for the first time. Remind me of my brother and myself. They're playing in the yard, playing in the street, riding their bikes up and down the streets. It's it's starting to be populated by children again. And it's really great to see. And I think that's something that nobody in the neighborhood would object to and that you should support. Let this be a let this be a place where kids can grow up where families can grow old together. I, I, my heart goes out to people who cannot be with their family anymore. I, I think that what you're discussing today is part of a bigger homeless problem. It, it doesn't have to do with houses. It has to do with homes. And homes have to do with families. And you're here to support families. We, we need your support on this one. They can buy more houses if he wants to spend $350,000, buy another house, put another person in it and six more people, and he'll have done his job. Thank you. Are there any more speakers? State your name and address. You have three minutes, and please Insist limit your 101 South to morning side. I oppose this. It's a residential area. Uh, like Bob said, it's it's really it's nice to hear uh, children's laughter and the commotion they they bring with them. Uh, the the traffic, the increased traffic, is obvious. Um, wear and tear on the street. You can look at the at the surface of Morningside Street. There's probably a secondary question there that, about where is the uh, Money for the road use tax is really going, but I won't go there this time. Um, I, I just oppose it. If there's any more speakers, again, we know people are here to oppose this, but please limit your comments to new facts for us to consider. <clears throat> State your name and address, and you have three minutes. My name is Carolyn Arnold. I live at 5 Peachtree Lane in Eastboro. And I am actually speaking uh, on behalf of some of the residents of Eastboro who also oppose this um, due to the increased traffic. It's already a difficult thing to get on to Woodlawn from Eastboro, and this would not improve matters at all. Thank you. State your name and address. You'll have three minutes. I'm going to make this brief. My name is Darlene Rallis. My phone, my address is 338 South Morningside. And I'm just saying I agree with whatever everyone else said, and I do oppose this. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay. Is there anybody virtually that would like to uh, make comments on this case? Is uh, I would. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Go ahead. You My have name three is minutes. Doug. State your name and address. Thank you. Doug Oliver, 207 Courtly. I oppose uh, this request. I agree with what everybody else has said. Just something to consider. There's an old adage that if you let a camel get its nose under the tent, it won't be very long before the whole camel is there. I think what we're seeing is a gradual erosion uh, of the neighborhood. I haven't heard anybody say there's three of these homes. I guess two of them are owned by Doug and another one. Uh, this would have a big structure in the back. The one on a block over has paved the front yard and they have a big parking lot there now. Uh, again, it's, and I talked to the planning guy the other day, there's no rule or regulation that's going to limit your approval of conditional uh, requests uh, in the future. It's only, we have to count on, on you know, your sensibilities and, and our oppositions. Uh, so, uh, and, and uh, you know, the school is already another one. 500 students come by car every day through the neighborhood. So we're seeing a huge erosion of the neighborhood. I oppose it and I ask you to do the same. Thank you. Is there anyone else virtually that would like to speak on this issue? Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this case uh, that's not here, but is joining us virtually? Okay, if not, I will bring it back to the applicant or agent. Pardon? Right. That's what I'm saying. The applicant uh, now has uh, three minutes to discuss, the, to uh, rebuttal the uh, comments. Doug Stark again. Um, with all due respect to everybody, I am very familiar with not in my backyard. Um, that happens a lot of places a lot of the time. Um, the bottom line is we are an allowed use. Um, I do appreciate, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate the comments that have been made about the way we do business. Uh, we try to be a first class act and, um, and, um, you know, there's the things I've heard today about trash and whatever I, uh, Bob, I'm going to, there, there's going to be something done about that. I can tell you that. Well, I, yeah, but we're, but we're gonna, my daughter, my daughter, who is, uh, my legacy back here, uh, I have her here for that very reason to hear what people are upset about. Condition of the street, I'll, I'll give you that one. The streets, it's a, it, public works needs to get over there and look at that street. That street uh, stinks. Now, the street behind it, Peachtree, that has a lot more traffic than we do because of the kids coming to the school and the, and the street behind there, those streets are both in much better condition than uh, Morningside, and I don't know why that is. Um, but a um, comment was made about families providing care our families are rarely there providing care. They do visit. They might uh, come and, and, and help a loved one eat every once in a while or whatever. But I think uh, Mrs. Baring will, uh, would attest to the fact that, you know, my caregivers provide our care. Our families don't come in to provide our care. Um, cars, yes, there are cars in front of our homes. Uh, there are cars up and down Morningside at other times. I'll definitely push back against that in front of other homes. Just, I'm almost done. Um, but even though, yes, there may be a nurse, there may be a home health, there may be a this and that, at any given point during the day, you're going to see one, two, maybe three cars in front of my home. You're not going to see eight or ten unless there is a special event of some type. So, um I appreciate it. I, I hope you guys will see it in our way that this is a good use. Uh, it is a, an approved use, and that 350 is going to go for a brand new up to date kitchen for a dining room, uh, a brand new dining room, and the bedrooms. So uh, the house will 
the house will look much nicer inside than it does today. Thank you. Yes, uh, Commissioner uh, McKay. Sir, yes. sir, Doug, whatever your name is. Doug McKay. <laughs> One of the people was commenting a while ago that you're going to have 10 bedrooms. Can you tell me how many bedrooms you're going to have in this facility in total? Well, today I have um, six, and we're going to add three more. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Yes, Mr. Nix. Doug, um, we know that 12 is the limit, but I thought I heard you say 10 or 11. Yeah, you know something? I agree that 12, I have two homes out west that are 12 person homes, but they're also 6,450 square feet. Um, this, this building, to me, it would not be appropriate to put 12 people in this house. So that's why I'm saying my, my real goal is 10. I understand that's two more than eight, but it's not that 50% that was, I mean, 12, I, I'm allowed to go to 12. I don't plan to go to 12. So, yes. so the $350,000 is not just the addition of bedrooms, which seemed a little outrageous to me, but. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. It's, it's going to, we're going to do a complete redo of the interior of the house. Like I said, we've got a, that house was built in 57. I don't know whether the kitchen's been updated or not, but it, we're going to put in a brand new, nice, nice kitchen, nice, nice, huh? And, and yeah, and then landscape. My daughter actually is a landscape architect, so um, we're going to do a lot of landscaping as well. Yes, Mr. Did you say you currently have six bedrooms in this house? Mm-hmm. Five. 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 Correct. I apologize. It's five. Are there any other questions from the commission of the applicant? If not, we appreciate your comments, and we'll bring it back to the commission. Um, any further discussion on this item? I'm sorry. The time's over for the public to speak, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, no, we're uh, now tape bringing it back to the commission for discussion here, and then we'll take a vote on it. Yes, Mr. Warren. I hate to be in the position to where I'm trying to approve and disapprove what kind of neighborhood people are going to live in because it takes all kinds. We've got folks that, that live there, and, and they take care of their neighborhood, and they're proud of their neighborhood, and they've obviously got that, that feeling about it. We've got a family that's taking care of our elderly, and they're doing a fantastic job. And by every measure that I've heard today, there's you know the people appreciate that. And somehow that you know another couple of people, two, three, four addition to that is going to th throw the the balance out. Yeah. It's it, I hate to be in the position to do that, but I just I just don't I don't, I don't I'm frustrated with that. With that, I'll make a motion to approve the request as presented. Second. Okay, it's and been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? Chuck, I know that, that you had expressed some concerns earlier about um, whether this ends up being a residential home for elderly or if in 10 years or so they sell and it becomes a uh, home for um you know, wayward kids. Did you? Is there any way that that can be addressed, or is that still a concern? That, of that's no longer a concern. I was. I didn't realize that this that this uh, operation had, had been in the same location, for, and so it's it's a different thought. Okay. Is there any other uh, discussion on the motion? We have a motion on the floor. I think I'd like to call for a uh, roll call vote on this, please. Yes, sir. Motion to approve. Duell? Yes. McKay? Yes. Green? Aye. Bill Johnson? Aye. Josh Blake? Josh Blake is absent. Okay. 
Nix? Aye. Foster? Aye. Warren? Aye. Joe Johnson? Aye. Miles? Aye. Hartman? Aye. Cunningham? Yes. Williams Bay? Sorry, I showed 12. Oh. Okay, thank you everybody for uh, your input on this case. We will now uh, dismiss the uh, MAPC meeting and move to a Board of Zoning Appeals case, which is related to this. Yes, sir. So I believe it's recess to go to the BZA. Right. So, BZA agenda. We are now going to ask for a motion to approve the minutes. You should all have those. Move that we approve the minutes from the uh, October 20th BZA meeting. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 the same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we have one case to consider in the BZA. It is 00057. It's a variance request in the city to reduce parking minimum from 10 to two spaces generally located on the southwest corner of Morningside and South Woodlawn, which is the case that we just heard. This is Philip Zivieberg with the Planning Department. For the record, I'll be very brief in my presentation as we've discussed many of the details of this case already. Uh, this is BZA 2257 for a parking reduction from 10 spaces down to two spaces for the property located at uh, 411 South Morningside. This is related to the um, previous conditional use case for a group residence limited. Uh, as mentioned before, the parking requirement for group residence limited is one per bedroom. So if the facility grows to a 10 bedroom facility, it would require 10 off street parking spaces. The applicant is requesting that the off street parking requirement be reduced to two based on the um, matter that uh, the residents within that facility do not drive based on age or disability. Uh, they do have caregivers that will need parking spaces and they can provide those off street parking spaces in their driveway. Um, I won't go through all the criteria. It is in your uh, staff report, but it just hinges on that. They want to retain the character of the neighborhood and not want to um, pave large portions of their lot in order to provide this uh, parking requirement that would largely go unused uh, by the residents. It could potentially be used by potential visitors, uh, but they uh, do not want to have to pave large portions of their property in order to provide that uh, parking area and again to retain the character of the neighborhood. Um, again, I'll be brief. We've already seen all the same photos and maps and site plans. And so with that, I will stand for any questions. Are there any questions of the speaker? If not, I don't. Question. Yes, Mr. Williams Bay. No cars could they get in the driveway? In terms of providing a legally sized parking space, they could potentially, I think we figured they could potentially get three, if not four. In terms of like where it would actually be constituted a parking space, if they're just trying to load the driveway as full as they can, they could probably do at least four, if not more, if they're parked pretty close to each other to where others would have to back out in order to let somebody else leave. Um, but that wouldn't technically be counted as an off-street parking space. But they could, the driveway is fairly large. Um, Philip? Yes, ma'am. Um, could the driveway be widened just a little bit to, to provide uh, on that wood, South Woodlawn mm -hmm. side to provide um, more parking along there? Or is the setback? The setback is the issue. The street side setback is at least 15 feet. Um, or actually, it looks like it's a, a platted 30 side street setback based on the site plan, probably because it's up against Woodlawn. They typically have larger platted setbacks against right. arterials and in residential zoning you're not allowed to have parking within the setback okay. any other questions of the speaker 
Um, I guess following protocol, the next uh, item would be to call the agent or applicant back up uh, for any comments on this. Okay, good. Is <laughs> I think we'll say for the record the applicant declined to comment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anybody present from the public that would like to uh, comment on this uh, Board of Zoning Appeals case? Is there anybody virtually that would like to comment on uh, this Board of Zoning of Appeals case? If not, I will bring it back to the commission for action. Mr. Duell, <clears throat> Joe Johnson. Yes. I would like to, I'd like to make, make a motion we approve this, but we expand the driveway to the uh, setback line on the um, woodlawn side and another parking space be added in the front um, between the present L-shaped drive and the front setback. Second. Hey, we have a motion and a second. I have a uh, question sorry, about Chairman. that. Uh, you're asking, uh, that motion is asking the applicant to expand their application, which we can't do. Okay. Okay. I would like to make a substitute motion that we approve per staff comments. Second. We had a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? I'm going to be in agreement with that. I think by adding a lot of parking in the front, it's going to take away the character of the neighborhood. And so I think this is a better solution. Yes. Yes, sir. Scott Wadel, Planning Department. Just a clarification question on the motion. As part of the motion, I believe you, you're indicating that you find that the criteria necessary for a variance have been met. Yes. <laughs> Hey, are there any other uh, questions or discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Motion carries. We will now dismiss the uh, BZA meeting and go back to the MAPC. The next case we have is... I believe it's 4.7. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4.7? Yes. 4.7, uh, 2022 Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christina Reith, Associate Planner with the Metropolitan Area Planning Department. This is case number PUD 2022 0025. The applicant here is Tradition LLC, and the agent Mark Savoy is with us here today to speak on behalf of the applicant. Um, the applicant is requesting a zone change from TF3 to Family Residential District to PUD Planned Unit Development to create the Randall Manor Planned Unit Development PUD number 109. The 5.3 acre property is bounded by West 9th Street North to the north, North Waco Avenue to the east, West Mandel Randall Manor Street to the south, and North Back Bay Boulevard to the west, uh, with the exception of a few properties. You can see what's outlined here in black is what's part of the proposed PUD. So the subject site has a total of um, 23 lots, 22 of which are developed with single family structures. And there's an undeveloped space in the middle here, which is currently used as a community common space. Uh, the proposed land use will allow all uses permitted by right in the TF3 two-family residential district on parcels one through three, in addition to accessory apartments, assisted living facilities, group residence limited, multifamily at a maximum density of 14 and a half dwelling units per acre, and utility minor. On parcel four, the proposed land use will allow a common area, church or place of worship, daycare limited, library, parks and recreation, recycling collection station, public, community assembly, neighborhood swimming pool, and utility major. Uh, so the proposed PUD will have a reduction in setbacks. Um, normally in a TF3 standards, the, the front setback is about 25 feet, and they're proposing 20 feet for the, uh, for the front setback. For the rear setback, TF3 standards normally require 20-foot rear setback, and they're, uh, for parcels one through three, they're proposing a zero-foot setback. 
Um, for the interior side setback, uh, in uh, the TF3 standards will be cut in half from six feet to three feet. And then on the street side setback, they're actually increasing uh, from 15 feet on the street side setback to 20 feet. Uh, the character of the neighborhood is residential with North Waco Avenue serving as a buffer between the residential and commercial uses. Uh, the site of the requested zone change is mostly in conformance with the future growth concept map of the community investments plan. The 2035 Wichita Fu future growth concept map identifies this area mostly as residential. Uh, reduced setback developments, such as those within the proposed P PUD, are appropriate for this area. The requested zoning also aligns with the Wichita Places for People plan. Uh, it aligns with strategy five, which is to provide a diversity of housing options to attract new residents and allow existing residents to remain in the established central area. And it is located within an area of stability where improvements should be targeted to uh, support development momentum and strengthen the established physical, or physical context. And the, finally, the requested zoning aligns with the goals for the Midtown Neighborhood Plan. The historic Midtown Neighborhood existing land use identifies this area as appropriate for residential urban and residential medium density. And so this kind of density that they're proposing would be appropriate for the area. So based upon the information available at the time of the public hearing, staff recommends approval of the application subject to the conditions that are listed in your staff report. And I will go through the photos here. Are there any questions for the speaker? Pardon? Oh. It's all right. Uh, so this is where, um, this is part of the future growth concept map uh, where it's mostly residential, but there's a little bit of commercial uh, that's in pink here in the corner. And uh, these are the parcels that he's looking to divide. So uh, parcel one is in green, parcel two is in yellow, parcel three is in blue, and parcel four is in red. So parcels one, two, and three, those are the ones with um, accessory apartments, group residence limited, uh, multifamily density, and parcel four is the one where you can propose a common space area, church, or place of worship, etc. cetera. Uh, this is the historic Midtown existing land use. As you can tell, it, it identifies the areas appropriate for uh, residential medium density and residential urban density. And uh, this is uh, Randall Manor. These are some of the uh, duplexes that are on Randall Manor here. Uh, this is North Back Bay Boulevard. <coughs> And then finally, we have the property as on, on West 9th Street North, which are, um, you can tell they're part of the property because there's wood, wooden fences in the front. Um, and with that, I will stand for questions. Yes. Do these units have garages? Where do they park? Um, I can't speak to that. Perhaps the agent could speak to that at the moment. But these houses were developed way before cars and driveways. So, yeah. I did receive some uh, comments from the public. They were mostly just wondering what the PUD was proposing. And so I explained it to them in depth. They weren't necessarily in, a, in support or opposition of this PUD. And it goes to DAB 6 on February 13th. Is it my understanding that uh, there's no houses that are going to be uh, torn down, but it's going to be improvement of an area in, in between them? Um, well, I mean, there's nothing that's stopping them from demolishing these houses and putting in multifamily density at a maximum rate of 14 and a half dwelling units per acre. Okay. Well, we can take that up with the applicant. Are there any other questions of staff here? If not, thank you, and uh, we will call on the applicant or agent to uh, speak. You'll have 10 minutes. Please give us your uh, name and address. Uh, Mark Savoy, 433 South Hydraulic, Wichita, Kansas. Uh, agent for the applicant, and the applicant is here. Uh, basically, not planning any real changes at all to what's there today. Um, the uh, applicant was interested in taking that area shown as parcel four, oh, it's wherever it is, uh, 
this is basically an open area for the use of everybody uh, in Randall Manor area uh, to utilize for outside activity, so forth and so on. And they were interested in building a swimming pool. But to get a permit to build a swimming pool, they'd have to go through the platting process. And uh, we got with the, the MAP, uh, MAPD people, and uh, they said uh, that if we did a PUD, we could set up the uses and avoid having to go through the platting process. And so it sounded like a good idea to us. Uh, like I say, all, uh, most of these homes uh, have been refurbished and then uh, rented out, so to speak, you know. So uh, the whole idea of this PUD is to allow for <coughs> doing some improvements in that uh, community area. One, one thing on, on our exhibit, uh, uh, I did add a uh, number seven on the general provisions, and number seven uh, verifies on that PUD that platting will not be required. We didn't want to have to all of a sudden go in to get a building permit for a swimming pool and have to plat to be able to get a building permit. The whole idea of the PUD was to avoid having to do any platting. So there was that one, one minor change. And other than that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Does anyone have uh, questions of uh, the applicant? Yeah, yeah, Scott Wadle from the Planning Department. I just want to make sure for clarification purposes that what you're looking for, Mark, is on the, on the attachment to the staff report, it shows six general provisions. And so what you're requesting from the podium is to add a seventh, yes. which is to specify that planning shall not be required. Yes. If for the swimming pool. Or other activity facilities. Okay, any type of building? In, in, anything, yeah. With, within a spe specific area of the PUD or within? Uh, it could be anywhere if they wanted to build an apartment building or whatever, you know. I mean, uh, that's, that's what the agreement was uh, at development review, was that we, would not, we could avoid having to get a building permit to do any uh, construction activities. Scott, was this an opinion of staff, or is this part of the code that, uh, that states this? If it's part of the public code, I would not think you'd have to have a, a reaffirmation of it. Excellent question. I was absent for that one, so I'm going to turn to staff and ask them for thoughts and comments. Mr. Chairman, if the question is, can a PUD eliminate platting if otherwise required, I don't think it can. Because if it's going to be platted, I don't think you can override those regulations by a PUD. Okay, I'd like to say, platting is a requirement to get a building permit. I, I mean, that was the whole idea of us doing, the recommendation to us was to do a PUD and, and we could avoid the platting process. So there are exemptions in the platting requirements. I think residential accessory structures would be a, an exemption. But I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that I would have an issue with the pool, which is residential accessory structure. But just to give a blanket, essentially this property does not have to be platted now or forever because of the PUD. I'm not sure that that is possible, and I'm not sure our legal counsel thinks that's possible. Yeah. However, we're getting Neil. Okay, I think we're going to try to figure this out. Yeah, the, the primary area is parcel four, that community community. Of, I mean, if they want to build a pagoda or a, you know, whatever that could be of use to everyone in the PUD, 
uh, which I, I'm sorry for jumping in, but I would point out parcel four, the land use is common area, only those to be used by those who live within the boundaries of it. It says church, a place of worship, daycare, library, parks, recreation, uh, community <clears throat> assembly, neighborhood swimming pool, and utility major. So largely those are describing uh, accessory use, ex residential accessory uses. Okay, I think that the detail that may be lacking here is that if the language was amended to specify that an exemption from platting for residential accessory structures per the zoning code, for the subdivision, for the subdivision regulation, sorry, it would just reinforce, if the PUD could be modified to include that language, it would simply reinforce the language that's already in the subdivision regulations. And I believe that would accomplish what you're looking for, which is to exempt the prop, to, to not have to plat in order to be in a, able to put in a swimming pool or other accessory amenities for the residents. Does, does that get you where you need to be? I think that's what we're looking for, yes. Thank you. Could you explain that in a way that we would Any other questions have a motion? of the app? <laughs> so would we have to add item seven, Scott? I Right. Um, okay, if there's no more questions of the applicant, is there anybody from the public here that wants to speak on this uh, case? Not being anybody here that wants to speak on it, is there anybody uh, virtually that wants to be heard on this case? If not, I will bring it back. We don't need to have the applicant rebuttal because there is no rebuttal. So we will uh, bring it back to the commission for discussion and a motion. Hearing no discussion, I'll make a motion to approve per staff comments with the addition under the general provisions in the staff report of number seven, platting shall not be required for development of residential accessory structures per subdivision regulations on parcel four. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion carries. That's good. And, and Cunningham is abstained, so don't forget. <laughs> okay, so we approve uh, 4.7. The next case is 4.9. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christina Reith again. Yes. Um, this case was referred back uh, from the Board of County Commissioners per their request. Uh, this is case number zone 2022-0054 and case uh, CON 2022-0039. <clears throat> so the applicant here uh, has three requests, a zone change from RR Rural Residential District to SF20 Single Family Residential District a conditional use to allow accessory apartments on each lot, and a conditional use to allow a community swimming pool. The subject property here, which is outlined in black, is 151.44 acres in total and is located in unincorporated Sedgwick County. Uh, the subject site is currently in use as agricultural land. Uh, a site plan indicates that the applicant intends to subdivide the property into 84 lots in order to develop single family dwellings on approximately one acre lots, each with an accessory apartment. Um, the, the applicant has not submitted building elevations that demonstrate um, architectural 
uh, compatibility that's required in the regulations, but they will need to do so prior to the issuance of building permits. Uh, so just a bit of a background here. Um, on October 20th, this case was considered by the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and received an approval recommendation 14-0. Um, at this meeting, one member of the public spoke in opposition to the application with concerns of large development in a primarily rural area. And then on November 7th, uh, the case was considered by the Citizens Advisory Board 3 and received an approval recommendation 7-0. And there were no members of the public that spoke on that, um, spoke on that item. So then on December 7th, that's when we had the Board of County Commissioners um, considering the case. And they voted 3-2 to bring it back to the MAPC uh, to consider the following items, which I'll explain later in this report. If a precedent is being set for this density of development in unincorporated county, fire protection, on-site septic systems related to development of accessory apartments, and considering the JAC's request to deny the zone change and conditional use application for their property. So if we go back to November 18th, um, after the MAPC meeting, but before the Board of County Commissioners meeting, one of the two applicants requested to withdraw their names from the application. Uh, if they had formally withdrawn their names from the application, the entire application would be withdrawn and the remaining applicant would have to wait one year to reapply for that zone change. Um, so for this reason, uh, staff is recommending approval on the zone change and conditional use only for the property owned by TCRS LLC, and we're re recommending denial on the zone change and conditional use for the property owned by the Jacks. So planning staff reached out to Sedgwick County Fire District 1 for comment regarding uh, the impact of fire response for a development of this size with se uh, possible second dwellings on the site. And we have someone here from fire today who is able to answer um, questions that you may have regarding that matter. Um, the development would have no fire hydrants and Sedgwick County Fire would be required to supply their own water on site. The Sedgwick County Fire District 1 indicated that because of the minimum one acre lot size providing separation between the structures, responding to a fire in this development will not present any different challenges than responding to any structure fire anywhere else in unincorporated Sedgwick County. Um, additionally, we got uh, some comment from the Metropolitan Area Building and Construction Department, and they prepared a written, uh, written statement that's in your report uh, reg regarding the wastewater management in the county. They concluded that the proposed development will not overwhelm the on-site wastewater system since it, it is akin to adding an extra bedroom to a house. Um, if we look at some of the uh, developments that are around the area, if we look at the bottom of this um, zoning map here, within one quarter mile south of the subject site on the east side of North 167th Street West, there is a subdivision with 34 SF20 single family residential lots that are 1.16 acres in size. So the zone change from SF, uh, RR to SF20 is not new to the area. Um, see here. Uh, planning staff did a review of previous applications within unincorporated Cedric County and uh, that included the development of accessory apartments. So um, another background here, uh, in February of last year we approved a zone change and conditional use for accessory apartments um, on the west side of North 127th Street East and one half mile north of East uh, 29th Street North. And this park parcel is eight, uh, 40 acres in size and is planned to develop 10 lots. Um, we concluded that a development of this size and scale in the county of 84 lots uh, with the opportunity for an accessory apartment on each lot would be the first of its kind in the county and possibly the state. And um, so uh, as I mentioned previously, in the last meeting that we had this on, uh, the zone change and conditional use requests are in conformance with the community investments plan. And um, based upon the information available at the, staff, at the time the staff report was completed, staff recommends, again, denial for the property owned by Kenneth and Allison Jack, and approval of the zone change request and conditional use for the property owned by TCRS LLC. I have not received any comments from the public about this case since um, before the previous planning commission. And uh, with that, I will stand for questions. Any questions of the speaker? If not, we will call on the agent or applicant. Please state your name and address, and you have 10 minutes. 
Good afternoon, Brian Lindeback, MKEC Engineering, 411 North Web Road, on behalf of the owners and applicant. Um, I think mainly uh, just to reiterate what we did last time, this is uh, a development that um, I think you've already seen as far as the, the approval of the plat. Um, we, we plan to develop that and with accessory structures being a part of that uh, component. And, uh, you know, we We've, we've noticed in the country that a lot of houses that will have a large garage uh, or, or possibly a, a pool house, uh, they would like to have, you know, maybe a, a dwelling there for a family member. So this is a, a component that we've built into the, uh, for accessory structures into this, this zoning application. Um, and I think the, the material explains it well enough that the owner, the adjacent owner decided not to be a part of this case and, anymore. Um, I think partly as a result of the plotting actions of making the connection to the road, but that uh, that was what he desired to do is to not become an app applicant anymore. So that's, in short, um, what I have, and I'll stand for any questions. I have any questions for the speaker from the uh, commission? Yes. Mr. Lindeback, it's still on our application, it says the owners are and you say one of those two have dropped out? Yeah, they've dropped out. And it, which, it which further has dropped out? Pardon me? Allison's. Allison's. Uh, if you, I, if I, you I, see on this parcel right here on the screen, no, I, I uh, that I owner dropped out. And um, it's it's listed in the staff report that they've they've uh, requested to be not part of the case. I think uh, maybe just because the original case had them as part of that, that's why it's included. And let's see Scott has something to say about that. The only reason I ask the question is to clarify it publicly. That's OK, clarify. certainly. I think, actually, if I could, a, a, a clarification on this is that they are still participants in the in the application, but they are requesting that it be denied for their property. They are they are continuing to move forward as an applicant because if they were to withdraw, then the case would it would no no longer be the case would no longer be They'd applicable. Start, They'd have to start over. So Thank they you, have Scott. elected to continue as applicants, but are requesting that. The zone change be denied for their property in the corner. So, what are they uh, applicants for if they want to be uh, excluded from any of the action in this case? So, they were an original applicant. There was two applicants. There are two applicants on this case. They were one of them. They are a separate property owner. Right. They were going to be included. The zone change, the conditional use applications would have applied to their property as well. Through the process, they decided they didn't want the zone change or the conditional use to apply to their property. If they would have withdrawn their name from the application, this whole process would have had to start over because of the change to the application. They are still an applicant. This is why the re recommendation is to deny the application for their property in an acknowledgement that they don't want it to apply to their property anymore. And that is as opposed to them withdrawing and forcing TCRH to have to start over. I understand. Thank you. I've got a question, Philip. Why were they uh, on the application in the first place? I'll defer to Mr. Linda back on that. Yeah, uh, they were cooperating, and they, uh, I think the, the the developer and the owner uh, next door were, were cooperating on some things, and and I think um, just generally they didn't they didn't like the the action of having the street go through their front yard, um, and that. You know, when that happened, they didn't want to be a part of this development in any shape or form. And so uh, we were trying to set it up so that, you know, in the future, if they wanted to subdivide their property, it would be ready to go. Uh, and that, that kind of fell apart with some of that, that action with the, the street coming through there. So, so does the street, is the street going to go through there or not? Yes, it is. That's part of the subdivision and plotting um, that we've made the connection on our side of the property. They'll certainly have to, to, to fully develop it with a proper street. They'll have to dedicate the, the, these owners here that um, are dropping out you know, effectively um, would have to dedicate that at such time that it's called upon. So staff, are we going to need two motions? We are in agreement staff with staff has, comments. Staff has one. an overall recommendation that includes denial of the one and approval of the other. Okay. Um, is there anybody present that would like to speak on this case from the public? 
Is there anybody virtually that would like to speak on this case from the public? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the recommendation uh, presented to us by the staff. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the uh, case as presented. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. <laughs> Motion carries. Okay. Moving along. The next case is 4.9. No, we just did 4.9. The next case is 410. Christina Reith again with the Planning Department. This is case number zone 2022 0070. Uh, the applicant contract purchaser is with us here today. His name is Seth Viamungu. And the current zoning is TF3, two-family residential district, <laughs> and they are requesting a zone change to NR, neighborhood retail district. The subject site is 0.17 acres in size and is located at 2202 North Minneapolis Avenue. The subject site is currently developed. Historic aerials show that a single family residential dwelling was previously on site as early as the 1950s. However, it was demolished by the 1970s. Um, I'm just gonna forward here to a photo of a sign that is currently present on site. There we go. Um, so the subject site currently has a monument sign that reads Northeast Miller. And according to the deed for the property, I spoke with uh, Housing and Development Services on this, the sign must remain on the property unless the property is rezoned. And if the property is rezoned, the easement cancels 90 days after the zoning is completed. The applicant proposes a retail store on site, such as a neighborhood grocery store. The NR Neighborhood Retail District is the most restrictive zoning district that allows retail general. Um, just comparing TF3 to NR, uh, the zone change request does not change the maximum height restriction of 35 feet or the street side setback. However, the front setback will be reduced from 25 feet to 20 feet and the rear setback will be reduced from 20 feet to 10 feet. Um, they will need to adhere to all parking, landscaping, and screening requirements. The requested zoning uh, is not in conformance with the plan's 2035 future growth concept map. I'll just go back here so you can see the map. Here we go. Um, oop, I went skip one. Okay, um, the map identifies the area to be primarily appropriate for residential uses. However, the, the property is adjacent to sites appropriate for commercial uses, as you can see here in pink across uh, 21st Street North. Um, it is in conformance with the plan's locational guidelines. Uh, the development pattern states that higher density residential uses and neighborhoods serving retail and office uses should buffer lower density residential uses from major commercial and employment centers and industrial uses. So neighborhoods serving retail, such as what is proposed at the subject site, would serve as a buffer between these residential areas and the limited commercial district zoning that we see here in pink. Um, the requested zoning is in conformance with the Wichita Places for People plan. Uh, the subject site is located in an area of opportunity in which uh, it requires capacity building at the neighborhood level to accommodate redevelopment that is beneficial to the neighborhood and its residents. Uh, the applicant is proposing to build um, upon a vacant parcel and develop a neighborhood grocery store, which segues into my next um, uh, next segment on uh, the revitalization plan. So the requested zoning is in conformance with the 21st Street North corridor revitalization plans recommendation. The plan indicates the need for neighborhood retail and in in what this is called the East sub area market. However, uh, the requested zone change is not in conformance with the preferred land use plan <laughs> or the preferred illustrative plan. The preferred illustrative or the preferred land use plan identifies the site as appropriate for single family residential use, while the preferred illustrative plan identifies the site within the residential edge of one half mile neighborhood commercial core. 
Based upon the information available at the time the staff report is completed, staff recommends approval of the zone change request. And I will add that I have not received any comments from the public on this matter. And uh, DAB 1 will hear this case on February 6th. And with that, I will stand for questions. Any questions of the speaker? If not, we'll call on the agent or applicant. Is the agent or applicant present? Yes. Please state your name and address. You'll have 10 minutes. Good evening, everybody. My name is Vyamung Seth. I live on 2825 East Glen Oaks Drive, Wichita, Kansas. Uh, my wife and I own uh, a small business here in the city, uh, retail and a driving school. We are planning to add this um, a retail store, grocery store to this neighborhood to actually uh, give access to the neighbor to the neighborhood uh, food and um, other uh, other um, uh, home use necessity uh, to be able to uh, some of these neighbors they travel more or two miles away to buy um, foods and other necessary home use. So if we put uh, this retail there, it's going to be a very much easy access to them uh, within the reach of walk 200, uh, 200 feet or less to be able to um, to bring development in that neighborhood. As she stays, there are some other businesses over there, but they, 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 uh, they are not offering what we are planning to offer to the neighborhood in which is gonna add uh, more opportunities for the neighborhood. And I will stay for questions if there is any. Do we have any questions for the applicant? No, thank you. Uh, we'll call on any uh, comments from the public. Does anybody like want to uh, speak from the public present? Please state your name and address, and you will have three minutes. <coughs> My name is Misty Colbert. I stay at 2268 North Minnesota. Um, the house that I live in has been in our family for over 55 years. I am a third generation living in that house. Um, I have seen so many businesses come through on 21st Street and shut down because of the uh, amount of theft due to the business. That has not changed. And the reason why it is, so, it is such a problem, even with a grocery store coming up in the neighborhood, is because it's so many people in the neighborhood who are without employment, and some of them who are homeless, and they just get in those vacant houses, and they live in vacant houses, then they go steal from the businesses around there that are trying to be there as a support to the neighborhood, and that's, I, I am not for rezoning that because that needs to stay a residential area. The residential area needs to be taken care of so that businesses will last. Until you can get businesses to actually uh, last and, and get the homeless and the, the people who are, are causing theft to the, the homeowners and the businesses around there under control, nothing is gonna change. There's no reason to zone that. For one more business, you, you're gonna change the zone, then one more business is going to come in and be ran out in the neighborhood. That's just the way it goes. Because the neighbor, and then the city, the city has four blocks, three, three whole blocks of houses that are vacant and boarded up. And it's been that way for years. And until this, it's, it's boarded up houses all through the neighborhood. So it's not even the proper time to be trying to deal with putting rezoning a particular area that should still be for housing. Because tell you the truth, me personally, I would not even continue to be in the neighborhood if I couldn't afford to. But I appreciate being able to own a home in the neighborhood, and that's why I'm constantly talking to my neighbors. I'm constantly, I pick up my yard every single day. I can understand how the people in Eastboro was feeling, because I would like to walk down my neighborhood. But a lot of those people, I don't even know who they are. They're strangers to me, and they're always eyeballing your house and what you might have outside and everything. We've had our cars broken into. That store is going to be no difference. 
And then the building is going to go up. The store is going to be run out of business, and it's going to be one more boarded up building in the neighborhood. So I say, nope, don't let them. I'm not for it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. I have a question for Excuse me, a question for the uh, speaker? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm looking on this area, and it looks like across the street is a commercial building. How is it staying in business? Across the street from, okay, across the street, those, uh, a number of those buildings have opened up in the last year or two. Give them just a little bit of time because right uh, a year before those, a couple of those uh, opened up, it was businesses in there. They lasted for a little bit of time and it didn't even have nothing to do with that. You can't survive when you're in an area where it's, 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 even though it's homeowners and it's residential and a lot of people are renters, what's happening is the properties are not being taken care of. It's too many boarded up places and everything. And so those businesses cannot be supported the way they need to be supported. And if it wasn't for the people who are trying to take care of their property, visiting the dollar store and the little gas station and everything, those businesses wouldn't last long. It, it's just a constant cycle. And those businesses, a number of them haven't been there, but a couple of years, the other business is more like a, it's more like a, uh, a place for, uh, I, won't, I don't want to say religion, but it's some kind of place like that on the end. And then the other place, he's been in business for probably as long as I've been living, and everybody supports him still, so that's a good thing. But he's one of the only businesses who have actually lasted in that neighborhood. And he's on the corner of that little strip. It's P and P C. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh, are there any other speakers from the public at this time? Please uh, state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. Giselle Thomas, 2268 North Minnesota. I have lived there for about five years now, and uh, what she said is true. And unfortunately, it's true. And so my thing is I would have to say no to approving this as well because not only of the concerns that Misty, Miss Misty brought up, but <clears throat> also because of the streets. There's going to be more traffic, and the streets over there always have potholes, and it takes forever for the potholes to be filled, and they refill them and refill them and refill them instead of uh, actually repaving the whole street. And then I also have a concern when it comes to how long um, the community would have to move the Miller sign and uh, the city agreeing to put the Miller, the Miller sign on city property so it does not have to continue to be moved uh, when it comes to rezoning. And also, um, when the business doesn't last, if it doesn't last, we will hope that it does since it is uh, a grocery store, but if it doesn't last, then that gives opportunity for another business to come in and take advantage of our community time and time again. It happens, just like the Dollar General that is in our community, and they are understaffed. Their staff don't feel safe because of all of the uh, robberies that happen. And then on top of that, when you drive up to just park, there's trash everywhere. There's trash all over the community, and then they don't have enough staff to go out and clean it up. I've even been told that the staff that is there, when they get sick of it, they pull their money together and pay someone to pick it up. And so I just unfortunately don't have any confidence in a new business coming in and not doing any better than that. Um, especially when they're such a big business and they can't even stay properly staffed. And so those are my concerns and those are my reasons for saying no to this. And I do agree that the community does need to help, or excuse me, the city does need to help this community to improve uh, so that we can welcome in these businesses that we need. Thank you. Are there any other speakers from the public that would like to talk? Yes. Good 
is the commercial structure across the street, is that fully occupied or do you know? <laughs> um, it is not fully occupied. Uh, I think there's one area that's not occupied right now. There is a new area there that sells um, like lingerie and stuff. And that business seems to have been uh, doing well so far. <laughs> he opened up another business right next to it. Actually, I'm not sure if that business is open quite yet. And then as uh, Ms. Misty stated, there is the PMP seed area who is under new management and they seem to be doing a good job. And then at the other end, um, I believe there is like a thrift store and I'm not sure how well that is doing, um, but usually there's more traffic on the other side of the street because it's right off the highway and people know the PMPC business very well. And so people will check out the other stores because they frequent that store. But when it comes to the other businesses that has arised in that area, it's always the same thing. Even if they stay for a long time, it's always an eyesore and it's always just it feels more like they're taking advantage of our community because the stores are not up kept the way they should be. Thank you, ma'am. One other question. Isn't there, isn't there a grocery store just down the street from this location? There's not a grocery store within this area. This is actually considered a food zone, or excuse me, a, um, a food desert, thank you. <laughs> um, and so, like I said, it is needed, but it's like at what cost? And so, uh, like Miss Misty said, up the street there is the dollar store, and there's actually two dollar stores within our area, and so far they have been the only ones that have stayed for a while. But like I said, it's not the best quality of store, and they've been, they, the city has had to make them provide certain foods, and they didn't even want to do that. And, and it's still a little off with what they provide. Um, and so um, with the gentleman being local, I would have more confidence. But at the same time, the track record is bad. And if their business doesn't last, then that just provides another zoning area to take advantage of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to uh, speak on this? Is, is there anybody uh, virtually that would like to uh, speak on this case? If not, uh, I will bring it back to the applicant for rebuttal. Seth again here, uh, and I do thank you guys for your comments uh, sincerely. I did, I did speak to some of uh, the business owners across the street. Unfortunately, I have not spoke to the Dollar General uh, employees, but I did speak to some of the uh, um, business owners over there. And as you said, they, are said they, they didn't raise any issues about robbery and anything like that, but they said that they are doing pretty well over there. And um, rest assured, I am also a pastor with the Southern Baptist Convention, and as you brought this to me now with the neighborhood and being in that situation, um, I and other pastors in the Southern Baptist Convention have helped so many neighborhoods uh, uh, to better their livelihood and everything. And I will do, if we get approved on, uh, on rezoning this, I will do anything in my power, and as we have done in so many other places, to make sure we are giving what the neighborhood needs and making better uh, livelihood and the things that needed to be done over there, like everything that you have mentioned, that it has come from my attention, and we will work together. And as I've had, I've, I've done in so many other places to uh, bring this neighborhood to a black place that it needs to be. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I'll bring it back to the commission. Uh, do we have a motion? A uh, comment and possibly a motion. I, one of the overarching goals of planning is to make neighborhoods better, and it doesn't, as a rule, go as a smooth process. I live in Delano, which is currently developing nicely in a lot of areas, but believe me, it was a long, hard process that went back and forth a lot. 
but you can't assume failure. You have to keep trying. And, and a local grocery store, for us it was a little Brahms, but neighborhood market, but a place where you can go get groceries by walking over and getting them or a short drive, that is a huge step forward. And I understand your concerns, but I think we have to, to take the chance and try. So I would like to move that we approve per staff comments. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further comments? Uh, yes. I'm going to go along with the motion. It's, there's, there's very few things worse than a, than a vacant building in an area. So I appreciate the concern that, that the speakers have, have given us. But if you don't try, you, then you'll never get ahead. You've got, you know, I don't know which comes first. Do you get the houses to support the business or do you get the businesses to support the houses? But we've got somebody that's willing to invest money in it to try to make it happen. And it's got the, it's got the chance. And so I think we have to give them a chance. Any other comments? Call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign? No. Okay, so we have what? 11-1. Uh, Motion passes. Next case is uh, zoning uh, 00071. Good afternoon, Erin Ewok with the Planning Department. Zone 2022 uh, 0071 is a zone change request from SF5 single family residential district to office warehouse district on a property that is three quarters of an acre in size, generally located on the northwest corner of North Arkansas Avenue and West 38th Street North. The property is currently developed with a vacant single family home structure and a 2,500 square foot garage. Should the request be approved, the applicant intends to operate a roofing business on the site consistent with the Unified Zoning Code's definition of warehousing. The office warehouse district is primarily intended to accommodate office and warehousing activities for um, generally building trades and similar businesses. The subject site, um, as you can see on the zoning map here, abuts properties, um, all zoned SF5 single family residential district and developed with single family residences. There's a property here, um, it's kind of triangle shape that is approximately 220 foot north of the subject site. And it is um, currently a non-conforming um, property developed with an AT&T warehousing facility. And I will get to a photo of that site in a moment, but um, there is, well, the site is surrounded by SF5 single family residential zoning and uses. There is um, a commercial use to the north there. Staff finds that the uh, requested zone change is in partial conformance with the community investments plan. You can see that the site is designated for residential use by the 2035 future growth map. Um, the, what makes it in partial conformance is that, of course, it does not comply um, with the residential designation. However, um, staff does find that the request is in conformance with the locational guidelines. So the screening and landscaping um, that would be required um, for the site and um, then the uh, recommended protective overlay, which I will get to in a moment, um, can mitigate the potential negative impacts of the proposed use on nearby properties. Um, I do want to note that um, where abutting residential zoning, screening will be required on the property. And the Wichita Landscape Ordinance will require a landscape street yard along North Arkansas and West 38th Street North. Um, additionally, a landscape buffer will be required along the north and west property lines. Based on information available prior to the public hearing, staff is recommending that the request be approved subject to um, a protective overlay, protective lay 403. 
Um, and in this uh, protective overlay, the office warehouse um, district uses that would be permitted on the site would be limited to just um, office general and warehousing. Um, so other office warehouse uses would not be permitted um, on this property. <laughs> I have received a decent um, amount of public comment this morning, actually, so I provided you all with an email from residents that they have signed, um, and then I think there are a few members of the public that would like to speak. Um, I will let them address some of their concerns. Before doing that, though, I will go through the staff photos, the site photos, I should say. So you can see that the um, subject site is currently developed with the vacant single-family home, as well as the um, garage. Went too far. So this is east of the subject site. You can see the single family homes um, directly to the east. South of the subject site. West of the site. And then this is the AT&T facility, so the commercial property that is to the north. I'm facing west here. And then another um, photo that shows the uh, AT&T facility structure. Even with that, I'm glad to answer any questions you all may have. Aaron, is all the access off of Ar Arkansas? Um, yes, so the access to the site is off of um, Arkansas Avenue. Or Kansas, sorry. <laughs> you can tell who's lived here all their lives and who hasn't. <laughs> if it were the river, I would have said Arkansas, you know, <laughs> the street. Bear with me. Uh, are there any other questions of the speaker? If not, uh, I'll call on the agent or applicant, uh, applicant to come forward, and you have 10 minutes. Um, please state your name uh, and address. Ron Blanchett, 3743 Agnes, Wichita, 67204. I'm just trying to get in compliance so we can move ahead, clean up the lot, tear down that old house, go from there. Thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant? Thank you, sir. Is there anybody from the public that wants to speak on that that's present here? Please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. My name is Sue Lorenz, and I live at 605 West 38th Street North. Um, my house is about 600 feet from the said residence. Um, they are passing around pictures now. I've lived in that house for 23 years, and in that 23 years, there has been no upkeep. It has, we've had homeless people. We've had to call <clears throat> many times the police. Um, we've had incidents of homeless people living in there, saying that they were living in there um, with approval. Now, I don't know this for sure, but with approval from the, this gentleman, and he, they're working for him. It had no gas, no electricity, um, no running water. They would visit, you could watch them poop in a can in front of the house. We've had to call city zoning on many occasions because of all the trash, and he has cleaned it up. These pictures are the cleaned up version. It was much worse. It has been an eyesore for 22 years and just gets worse. There's been never any help to try to get that place cleaned up. Are there any questions of uh, the speaker? <clears throat> if not, thank you for your comments. Oh, I did want to comment. We did get signatures from all houses around that. Every person signed the petition saying no. The house behind, the house on each side, and the two houses in front. Thank right. you. Are there any other uh, people in the audience that want to speak on this matter? 
please keep your comments to uh, items that haven't been uh, already brought up. Uh, please state your name and address. You'll have three minutes. Okay, my name's Teresa Kennedy. I live at 621 West 38th. And no disrespect to this guy, I've never met you, but uh, as a property owner, but not living on the property, you have no idea what we have went through with the homeless people, drugs, fighting, the cops. And as homeowners in our neighborhood, we're trying to keep our neighborhood safe, and we don't see any advantage to zoning this property warehouse office. Uh, we kind of think it would affect our property values and with this, we only see more traffic and blight from the property. And like my neighbor said, it hasn't been maintained. And we already have so much traffic on our Kansas, and we feel this will only add to that. And like uh, Aaron said, we have AT&T north of us that has brings in tons of traffic. And we like to keep our area residential as much as we can. And we... Like Sue said, we talked to almost every neighbor in the area, and all of them had stories about the place, and none of them were good. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this case? Please state your name and address. You have three minutes, and limit your comments to anything that hasn't already been said. Um, I am Hortensia Hernandez. I live at 3845 Kansas. And I am here to oppose uh, to this zoning due to the traffic that's what my neighbor has, has said. Um, we already have enough with at and I have, I think, the roofing or whatever he's trying to do there is going, I'm right next to it. And I have a little baby there that I watch, that's my grandbaby. And I'm not going to want a lot of men or gentlemen or people around that area. I want to, I want him to be secure. I have a girl that's 17 years old. I see a lot of uh, traffic there with guys and stuff um, around her that concerns me. I, I think I'll be scared to go to the store and leave her alone because I don't know what could happen if when I'm not there. Um, or house, we worked really, really hard to make our house beautiful. We rebuilt it, we made it nice. For us, it's beautiful, and for the value to go down, I think it will be like a bummer for us, you know, um, to devalue our property we work, that we worked so hard for. And I oppose if Thank anybody has comments. questions. Is there any, yes, you. Um, could you take that pointer and point to where your house is? Uh, my house is this one. Oh, this one right here. So. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak on this at this time? And, yeah, I, I, I mean, neighbors, the Hispanic neighbors that we are next to, um, they have said, yes, you know, we don't want any more traffic through here. Please speak on our behalf. We can't speak English, but please go and speak for us. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody uh, virtually that uh, is listening that would like to speak on this case? If not, I'll uh, bring it back to the uh, applicant for uh, two minutes for rebuttal. I've only owned the property for 10 years and I had a family living in there for the first eight years and there was never a problem. And then they left, so my foreman had some people move in that were working for him and it got out of hand, so we just had all them removed. So we're trying to clean it up and take down that one building. So we're just trying to become compliant, so. Which building are you gonna take down? The house. I just built the shop 10 years ago, 12 years ago, the garage. And then we bought the property from a nursery that had been there for, you know, 30, 40 years. And it was a mess when we bought it and we cleaned it all up before so 
So no one would be living on the site. You would just be using it for a roofing. It'll be warehouse. Yes, just roofing. It's just, and none of my employees meet there. Ex, you know, except if they need some. So I just store stuff in this garage. Okay. And Mr. Williams Bay. Oh, I had another question. Oh, I'm sorry. And you're okay with the the landscape and the screening requirements? Oh, sure. That asking? Whatever, whatever we want to do. Okay. It's got a fence all the way around it now, except for the front. And we put that fence up. If I'm understanding, the house itself is the issue with the neighborhood. Yes. Correct? I, the house is gone. So. Is it still an issue? Well, I've got it all boarded up so nobody can live in there. I guess there was people living in there that I didn't know about. Okay, but you're going to demo that, right? Yes. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Uh, it, your oh. your time to speak is up, and he has uh, got a rebuttal, and then we're going to discuss it among ourselves. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. But... Okay, are there any more questions of the applicant? If not, we'll bring it back to the commission. Thank you. I like a, I a quick. So, what's your schedule for demoing this house? Probably next two or three months. It's a cinder block house, and it's got metal windows and everything. So, the quicker we can get it done, you know, I've already had people start bidding on it. So, I drive by there at least once a week, and it's an eyesore for sure. Oh yeah, they're, oh they're yeah, absolutely right. Well, I had to put the plywood up because people were breaking in there, you know, sleeping in there. So, I put lights on on the garage front and back to try to ward people <clears> off. So. Any other questions? If not, we'll bring it back to the commission for action. Any discussion? Entertain a motion? Yes, Bill. Yes, uh, <laughs> since the house is going to be removed, uh, I approve this for staff comments. Second. It's been a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Next case is 00071. That's the one we just did, isn't it? Oh, excuse me. I'm out of sync. Yeah, it's 413 is the next case. 7-3. Christina Reith again with the planning department. Uh, this case is going to look very similar to one I presented earlier. Uh, the applicant is requesting a zone change from RR Rural Residential District to SF20 Single Family Residential District and a conditional use to allow accessory apartments on each lot. The subject property is almost 80 acres in total and is generally no no located on the north side of East 37th Street North and within one half mile east of North Greenwich Road in an unincorporated Sedgwick County. The subject site is currently in use as agricultural land. The applicant has not submitted a site plan, but I, I believe that there's going to be one with the PowerPoint, but it was not submitted to staff ahead of time. Um, but according to the Unified Zoning Code, each lot must be a minimum of 20,000 square feet. Um, and they also have to demonstrate that the building elevations and the architectural compatibility between the accessory apartments and the main structures. Um, if we look at some of the uh, properties around here, property to the north is zoned for rural residential district and is in use as agricultural land. Property to the south is also zoned for rural residential district, and they're developed with single-family residential dwellings. Property to the east is also agricultural land, RR Rural Residential District. And property to the west is located within the city of Wichita as LI Limited Industrial, and it's developed with a single-family residential dwelling and agricultural land. 
Uh, for public services, I know that this was a point of contention for the last case. Uh, so the water here will be serviced by Rural Water District 1. And according to the agent for the applicant, sewer will be provided by alternative septic systems that are not public. Uh, the zone change and conditional use requests are not in conformance with the community investments plan. If we take a look at the 2035 Wichita Future Growth Concept Map, the map identifies the area to be primarily appropriate for agricultural and vacant uses. And this is likely due to the fact that planning staff did not anticipate this much residential growth in Wichita and Sedgwick County at the time that the Future Growth Concept Map was adopted. Based upon the information available at the time the staff report is com uh, was completed, staff recommends approval of the zone change request and the conditional use with the following conditions that you see in your staff report. Um, I did get an email yesterday, um, and the paper copies are available at your desk here. Um, I did have a chance to speak with the gentleman. Um, I assured him that it, um, these are going to be single family residential dwellings, and the accessory apartments are only accessory apartments for single family houses there. And with that, I will stand for questions. Do we have any questions of our speaker? If not, I'd call on the uh, applicant or agent to, to speak. You have 10 minutes. Please state your name and address. Uh, Brian Lindeback, MKEC Engineering, 411 North Webb Road, on behalf of the owner and applicant. Uh, we are in agreement with staff comments. Uh, with approval today, we will pursue a plat in the near future. Well, we're looking at uh, around 20 to maybe tops 30 um, houses. This will be a rural development. Uh, we'll provide connectivity like we've been doing to adjacent properties. Um, but uh, with that, I'll stand for any questions. Any questions from the commission? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll call on anybody from the public that's present that would like to speak on this. Is there anybody here that would like to speak on this case? Did, who did we have that wanted to hear this case? I think my recollection is that there was a member of the public who had indicated that, okay. uh, uh, someone who was in, in person here. Okay. Well. I'll bring it back to the commission then. Uh, Kirk Sponsel, Is there anybody virtually Council. that wants to uh, hear this case? There not being anybody that wants to hear this case, I'll bring it back to the commission for action. Kirk, are you there? Yes, I was just going to ask that you uh, ask about people who are uh, zooming in as well. So that's resolved. Thank you. Yeah, I just did. Okay. I move for approval per staff comments. Second. 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 Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion carried. Okay. We are down to uh, the last uh, case, uh, which is 00074. Now, is there somebody here that wanted to hear this case? Still We're here? recommending denial of this case as well. That's right. Okay. Uh, good afternoon again, Philip Ziebenbergen for the record. Zone 2274 and Con 2254 is a request to rezone a property located on the east side of South Seneca uh, within one block south of West 55th Street South from limited commercial to limited industrial and a conditional use to allow for wrecking and salvage in order to permit an existing tow lot that exists <coughs> on the site. It's the intention of being able to store vehicles after they've been towed. The reason they need the wrecking and salvage is that these vehicles potentially could not be operable. And so vehicle storage yard uh, would not be an appropriate uh, use classification uh, for the property. As I mentioned before, this site is currently in operation and it looks like it is developed in relation to the site plan that is in the report if we can get there it's just a little slow so the aerial is not accurate it's been updated since then let me get to some site pictures here so there's your site plan showing fencing and parking so we're on seneca looking 
east, and this is a private drive. This is the existing building that shows on the aerial, and they've got a screening fence around it with an entrance off of the private drive and vehicles currently being stored on site. I believe one of the vehicles you can see the top of here is a RV. Um, so they're looking to come into compliance. They were issued a, a, a no, notice of violation um, from zoning enforcement, and so they are coming to potentially come into compliance. The Unified Zoning Code requires adherence to supplementary use regulations for wrecking and salvage <coughs> found in Section DC, D6E of the Unified Zoning Code. And those three items are not abutting an arterial street, expressway, or freeway. In the opinion of the Planning Commission, it will not adversely affect the character of the neighborhood and is enclosed by a fence or wall not less than eight feet in height and having cracks and openings not in excess of 5% of the area of such a fence. In effect, they are requesting a waiver of item number one because South Seneca is an arterial street and they are abutting directly onto it. In order to waive this, it would require a recommendation from the Planning Commission and approved by the governing body. As I mentioned before, the site seems to be developed in, fair, in uh, compliance with the site plan they submitted, which does show the fencing around and where the parking is located. What is not in compliance with this is the area for circulation drives, parking for um, customer, as well as the parking area for the vehicles needs to be surfaced um, with asphalt or asphalt concrete or things of like a substance of that nature. Um, because South Seneca is an arterial street, it requires a landscape street yard, um, which if the fence is on the property line, they would have to move the fence along South Seneca back inward and provide landscaping along South Seneca. The site plan does not identify which areas are for customer parking and they'd have to come into compliance with that. Property surrounding the site is <coughs> zone limited commercial on the north and the east and on the south, but um, the north is a, a church property. Even the vacant parcel here is owned by the church that is at the corner. Um, the property to the south, though it's zone limited commercial, is a residence. This parcel here is a residence. This larger parcel that is actually in control of the private drive is residential back here, and they are the property owners of this um, subject site as well. Property across to the west is unlimited commercial and is undeveloped. You've got a service station, um, but you have primarily residential properties around it. This limited commercial zoning at the corner is a remnant of the uh, action in the 50s when this property was in the county where the Board of County Commissioners uh, rezoned the arterial corners to commercial um, to help promote development at that time within the three mile ring outside of Wichita. The character of the area is also defined with the fact that there are no uses like this within a two mile radius of the site. If the application is approved, it would be introducing a new use into the area. Within one half mile to the west and south, at the, um, there are instances of general commercial zoning. Uh, you can't see the general commercial zoning, but it's just right at the bottom of where this map cuts off. And limited industrial zoning, again, that would be farther to the south. Uh, but those, the current uses of those sites do, are not indicative of the zoning that they have. The comprehensive plan identifies the site as appropriate for residential uses, so it is not in conformance with the comprehensive plan. This area is within the South Wichita area, Hayesville area plan, which it also is not in conformance with, which also recommend, recognizes this area for residential land, residential low density. Um, specifically, and I can get to you that area as well here. So the very corner property where the church is located is identified as appropriate for commercial, but farther south you get to uh, residential uses within this land use map. It also supports removing auto-related commercial uses within this area to improve commercial growth and development opportunities. 
Um, so this does not conform to that plan. Overall staff is recommending denial of the zone change and conditional use. For the um, findings in your staff report, again, it would be introducing a new use within the area. There's nothing of this nature within a two mile ring. The subject property is zone limited commercial, which supports a wide variety of residential, civic, and commercial uses that would be more compatible with the existing surrounding development. The zone change to LI and the conditional use um, could bring uh, uh, opportunities for nuisance complaints um, and a higher intensity of uses that would be appropriate for the site. Um, introducing this use as a new use to the area, there's the concern with the undeveloped commercial property to the west of potentially opening the door for future requests for uh, land use changes to potentially mirror or have additional types of those uses in the area. It is not in conformance to the plans as I presented. If the Planning Commission were to uh, approve this application, we did provide conditions of approval in your staff report for consideration. One is to provide an updated site plan for the reasons I stated before. Um, it would have to be in compliance with the um, supplemental use regulations, um, but would also require that waiver of the item number one since it's on an arterial street. The height of the rec wrecked vehicles or salvage, including parts or accessories, shall not exceed the height of the screening fence visible from ground level view of any public right of way or adjoining properties. Uh, one in particular is dedicating an access easement along the private drive. They do have access, based on the plat, they do have access to Seneca from their parcel. This piece of land is a separate parcel from the larger parent parcel that has the access drive, which says it can be sold independently in the future. So in order to protect access to this drive, if it is to the site, if it is approved, we, are require, we would require an access easement to be dedicated for access to that site um, or to have, in a sense, you could then also, I guess, put a drive on the Seneca, but the way they have it designed right now, they would need the access easement. Um, there's provisions there regarding um, weed control and uh, rodent control. Off-street parking spaces would need to be provided. Um, access to the subject property would be um, on an ongoing basis for inspections for soil and groundwater contamination from environmental services um, and several other standard conditions regarding the type of use for wrecking and salvage uh, yards that we have used in the city on previous cases in the past. Staff has heard public comment on this case. We have individuals here who should get a Medal of Honor uh, for bearing with us all afternoon and into the evening. So I will be brief in my review of these pictures and we will let them speak about this case. I believe our agent is online uh, for when it is their time to speak. So again, this is the subject property. This is the looking south at the subject property. This is from the church parking lot. This is the vacant property that the church owns. You have the access drive and then you have their property line. This is looking west at the church property. So this is the subject property over here. This is looking west at the property to the south. Um, more residential properties to the south as well. This is looking directly across the street at the vacant commercial property. This is looking south from the church parking lot. This is the house that is behind it right here. Um, so that's kind of in relation to where that house is and um, we will leave it at that. I will stand for any questions. Any questions from the commission? Philip, you mentioned that there's no other um, similar uses, I guess, within a couple of mile area. I, I'm I guess that you're talking about there's no conforming uses because I know of at least four or maybe five places that are operating in this way that I guess aren't conforming? Um, I could stand to be corrected for my review, um, just kind of on an aerial basis of, I don't, I'm not exactly where, familiar with the areas you're, I know we have these types of uses on South Broadway, which is a couple miles away. Um, right. So again, I, I could stand to be corrected, but definitely in the immediate vicinity, 
Um, it definitely is a different type of corridor than this type of corridor at kind of this general area of the city over a couple of miles to South Broadway. Yeah, I think those are popular areas to have non-conforming uses of this type. So just curious. Thank you. Any other comments uh, for Philip? If not, I uh, understand the uh, okay. agent or applicant is... Looks like we actually have him here in person. I apologize. Yep. Please state your uh, name and address, and you will have 10 minutes to make your presentation. Uh, my name is Alec Wisely. I live at 1175 West Maywood. Um, I own top rated towing. Um, I hate the fact that the only real way to get a tow yard zoned includes those words because I understand 100% the neighborhood's issue with it and the city's issue. Um, I don't know how much everyone in this room knows about all the tow companies here. Uh, I know that city, the city and tow companies have a lot of issues. I worked for one of the bigger companies for a long time and that's why I started this company was to be different. Um, I'm not just a local um, private tow person. You know, I tow for a lot of global contracts like AAA, stuff like that. Um, my intentions are not to even necessarily be on a rotation for accident purposes. It's more of just turnaround storage, if that, I guess, is the best way to put it. It'd be more of a, a car sits there, yes, it may be 30 days, but 90% of the time, if a car is there um, and it's been in an accident, if it's leaked anything, it's going to, everything is going to be out of it by the time I pick it up. Um, that doesn't help my case at all. I understand that. But, I mean, <clears throat> unfortunately, it's hard to find any lot in Wichita for a tow yard because it's just those two words are the first thing everyone hears and sees, and I understand it. I get it. Um, but, um, you know, I'm willing to do whatever I can to do what I have to do for the property if it's possible to even get it as storage. Uh, another thing I want to add is there's a, there would be a lot of money in security um, in that general area, which is that area's biggest problem is catalytic converter thefts, thefts in general. Um, we're a 24-7 company. You know, I know that's not much to offer to anybody for that area, but it's all I can do. So um, if there's any questions, I can uh, Mr. Answer. Johnson, you have a question? Uh, have you read the uh, staff report in the event that we would approve it, the stipulations that they required? Yes. Would you be in agreement with those? Yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the commission? Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Um, do we have anybody from the public here that would like to speak on this? Okay. Well, please uh, go to the podium and state your name and address, and you have three minutes. I'm Randy Corbett. I live at 5700 South Seneca. Uh, we had no knowledge of this thing. I don't know if they have to pass around something to let you know that that's what they're going to do, but this thing just kind of grew out of the ground. Uh, his fence on the south is not finished, nor is it on the east. So we get up, we look out our bedroom window, we see wrecked cars piled up there. Uh, I would also like to know if, uh, should it pass, is the property just directly south of it would be able to be purchased and expand this thing. I mean, yeah, that put it right on our fence line. Uh, those are our main concerns. I mean, if what's already there, we got to live with. I would would like to ask that somebody enforcing to go ahead and finish the fence up. But I don't want it coming any further south than about in my property. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else from the public that's present that would like to speak? Yes. Please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. 
My name is Kevin Hinnon. I live at 5634 South Seneca. I own the property to the east of it, the back lot in between the two properties. So my issue is you do say it's a 24 seven operation. Well, now I have tow trucks and people in my front yard 24 seven. You know, you notice, you acknowledge there's a theft issue, okay? The more people you have come in there trying to steal catalytic converters, they just come all the way down the driveway to now they're on my property. I Sir, have a huge please problem address with that. the, the uh, commission. Not a problem. That's a, that's a big issue to me. You know, I have a family that lives there. I have property. I have vehicles I want to take care of. It's a problem. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Well, other than resale value and property tax is a big issue right now. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else uh, present uh, that would like to speak on this case? State your name and address, and you have three minutes. My name is Greg Allison, and uh, I'm a member and a board member of the Church to the North, um, South Life Church, and we're, we're opposed to this use in zoning uh, we we are in agreement with staff comments for denial, and uh, we're in agreement with recommendations. Now, I would request that if you do move forward with a recommendation to approve uh, with LI zoning in this area, it just opens the door for future opportunity to expand the LI zoning. And I think uh, the staff has done a good job representing that that's way out of conformance with uh, the neighborhood and with uh, the plans that the the city and of wichita cedric county and hayesville has had so uh, to uh, open the door for all those different uses on yes it's a small parcel but also open the door for uh, expanding and using that as as the door, foot in the door to to do that i uh would greatly opposed and I frankly was a little bit surprised that they didn't request a protective overlay to be laid on this as part of uh, any conditions of approval and um, I think uh, the other thing is I know um, we have LC zoning uh, we're all LC and with, with neighboring LC zoning you're not necessarily uh, required to to screen that uh, with landscaping, I would uh, say that most uh, of the owners around there are residential in nature and adding screening to this would probably be a, another uh, thing that you would, should consider as far as uh, requirements beyond just the fence. I'd be happy to, oh, I, I do think having a professionally done site plan would be good because I'm questioning whether all the traffic flow and everything actually works the way they uh, expect it to work as well. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for your comments, sir. Uh, is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak at this time? Uh, Please state your name and address. You have three minutes, and please uh, address your comments to things that have not already been covered. Sure. My name is Robin Corbett. I live at 5700 South Seneca, and I just have something to add to what my husband had added earlier is the fact that we are on well water, and so anything that would come from these cars that are being towed there, we have a concern that that could possibly mm. contaminate the well water that we have. So I think that was all I needed to add. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public that is present? Is there anyone that's on virtually that would like to comment on this from the public? If there's not, I'll bring it back to the applicant uh, for rebuttal. You have two minutes. Uh. For the previous issue stated, I'd like to say the only reason the fence was not completed yet was because the city inspector had come by and <laughs> told me that there was a different way that I needed to go about doing things, and that's what I did. Instead of, instead of putting more time and 
making everyone think that it was just easy for me to do this, you know, and it just gets approved, I, I, I stopped and tried, I started doing things the right way. Um, I have no intentions of moving further south. Um, I know that property butts up to the property of the owner that I rent from. His plans with that property, I don't know, but it will not involve or would not involve anything with the towing. The theft, I 100% understand completely. Um, the only thing I can say to that is, you know, I can add more security to the road if my driveway is not on the driveway, it's off Seneca. You know, I'd be more than willing to do that. And I don't want, you know, I, I'm from the same area. That's the best way I can put it. You know, I tried to do a nicer fence, not just chain link or something with screens like the other tow lots, not saying anything bad about them. Um, but the image of it is important to me. As crazy as that sounds for me being the owner of tow trucks, um, that's all I can really say. Commission, do you have any questions of the applicant at this time? Thank you for your comments. I'll bring it back to the commission. Okay, yes. I've got some comments. I, to me, this is just not an appropriate use for this area. I think it's being not in conformance with the adopted plans, for one, and two, it'd be introducing a new use to the area. So I would be in favor of denial. And a motion? You would I will make a motion deny, to deny so it, I, yes. Right. Second. Second. Okay. So a yes vote means that you... Uh, vote to deny this case okay all those in favor say aye. aye aye opposed motion carries unanimously thank you for your patience we have one more addition to the agenda and i'll turn it over to scott to make the introduction but i just want to say we heard this presentation in advance plans this morning and uh, i would like to thank tia who is fighting a cold, I think, for staying with us this whole time to come in here and, and make the presentation. Thank you. Mr. Dill, I appreciate Hi. everybody. Is it, is it too late to listen to PUD 00027? No. Yeah. That item has been that item has been voted on already. Right. Uh, Mom, yes. Mom, Joe Johnson. Yes. <clears throat> I would like to recommend that that the planning commission would take the recommendation of advanced plans and approve this and pass it on to the council. Well, that sh that shortcuts it. <laughs> well, it's it's sort of, it's sort of like a consent item. I can do my minutes. presentation in ten minutes or less, but I, I appreciate that. the motion, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Uh, we have a motion in a second. Okay, we have a do we have a motion, uh, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Yes. Okay, in a second. Okay, we have a motion in a second to accept the recommendation of the Advanced Plans Committee to uh, pass this on to the City Council for affirmative action on the plan that uh, has been laid out. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign? No. One no. Okay. No. Two no's. We still have a quorum. Eight. Let's have a roll call. Okay, so we have a quorum and it passes 7-1, so it's approved. Okay. Correct? Right. Thank you. Mr. Warren is absent. He's, in, he's right. indisposed at the moment. Right. Thank you. Thank well, that you. made easy work Thank of things. Staying my, with us. I'm sorry no. that this drug out is long, but uh, my name is Tia. My presentation's up here, and if you have questions, please just reach out to me. Thank you. I, a clarification is, I believe we had two no votes on that, yeah, right? It was six so two. six two. Yeah. Sure.
Are we adjourned? <laughs> Joe, I move for adjournment. Joe, are we adjourned? I second that. <laughs> recording stopped. The recording has stopped. Okay. <laughs> I guess that means we're adjourned.